Yo, what's up, guys? How's it going? And welcome for another episode of the Group Up Podcast. We are here with the great Jeff Debate. And let me get right to it, introduce my panel. So in the bottom right, we've got the voice of reason, the runner of your Overwatch, Frida. What's up? <laughs> I hate this intro. Why, <laughs> why can't I be the crazy uncle? I guess that's what Sam uh, You can be the be. crazy that's uncle what, that, if you want. That's what I want to be. I'm the voice of reason. Now I got to be smart. You, you, you got to be crazy the bar low, So it's easy to achieve. Okay. Okay, hey this is a random guy who walked into stream, Frito. Mm -hmm. um, in, the, in the bottom left, we have Ryan God himself, slightly sore throat today, so please bear with, guys. He's not whispering on purpose, it's flats. Hello, hello. My voice is trashed. But I appreciate him still being here nonetheless. That's dedication for you guys. And in the top left, I know this guy is going to be coming in with some great takes today. Samito, what's up? I've got some bourbon in my blood for this. I'm ready to freaking roll. <laughs> coming in hot. <laughs> let's go let's go this is going to be absolutely great guys we're going to basically discuss first and foremost jeff's departure it has been just over a week now since jeff kaplan vice president of blizzard and lead developer watch has left the game so we're going to talk about that we're going to talk what it means for the future of the game what aaron could bring and also just our our thoughts on what the future should be monetary models open q versus 222 and all that but first and foremost my first question i'm going to give is right over right over samito the bourbon laden samito samito why do you think Jeff left if you think he left voluntarily? Um, because yeah, he didn't do a good job. Like, <laughs> the more I think about it, and I love Jeff, love him to death. I think the first two and a half years of Overwatch, I think from, I guess, the concept that seven years ago, 2013 point to two years ago, he was an like A plus, like literally an icon, dude didn't miss on top of his shit kept our game and the project hyped in the gaming industry and on top of that maintained it well and kept us at the top when we were out for that first two-year point there was so much interest in overwatch right and while the decline of the game may not be a result of his direct actions as the game director and the ceo that burden falls on you whether it was directly whether the outcome of what happened was directly a on account of your actions or inaction in his case i think it's inaction because obviously i've talked about this in my state of overwatch video i talked about this for a long time we are years behind the model of the rest of the industry the reality is our leadership missed the major change in gaming becoming mainstream and overwatch did not adapt to ride that wave the same way that fortnite has warzone has apex legends has on all of these things that these people were doing Overwatch did not get a single one, and ultimately that accountability falls on the boss. It falls on the CEO. People are blaming Activision. It does. It's not Activision's job to direct the game. They are the publisher, right? It's the game director, the CEO, the man's responsibility, not the entity's responsibility, to hold that accountability, right? So I think was he asked to leave? Who the hell knows? Right? Who the hell knows? Honestly, I don't care. It's it's he he did his job. I respect the guy on a personal level. I, I'm grateful for everything he's done. He's a hilarious guy. There was not there's not a game dev on this planet like Jeff Kaplan, and he should go home proud. His family should be proud of him, and the gaming industry should be very grateful for everything that he contributed. Flats, do you agree with that assessment? Uh, for the most part, uh, I do think. There is a strong possibility that, well, yes, we were behind, but I think part of that is there's only so much you can do with the game. And like you couldn't you can't microtransaction Overwatch at this point, like like Overwatch one is it's not possible. Like you can't just like two years in the game, like, OK, we're just going to like switch the free to play model and, and, and make your money somewhere else. I don't I don't think it would have been possible with Overwatch one. Like they needed to make a, a totally new game to base it around that. Um, so I think being behind the industry, I kind of want to say, honestly, is, is, is slightly a little bit of unlucky. However, however, I do think uh, Jeff is not a fan of microtransactions or paying for more stuff. Uh, we've what, five years in Overwatch and we've literally other than i guess technically mercy skin never paid for a single skin or archives event or halloween as much as you either hate it or love it or whatever it might be we never paid another nickel you know like 
it, we just didn't. Um, and I kind of want to wonder is if with Overwatch 2, was there a philosophy difference between what they wanted to take the game going forward and being like, hey, we want to switch the free to play model, which I think everyone knows that this is what is the best right now and everybody wants it. And, and on top of that, too, how to monetize the game when you are having the free to play model. And I don't think Jeff was a good fit for it. I think that he hadn't ever done it before. I don't think he liked the idea of it. And I think there was there is a possibility that there could have been, you know, some uh, disputes over it and on which way they should take the game and which way where things are acceptable to be monetized and when things are not acceptable to be monetized. And that pressure and that stress just got too much. And he could have been asked to leave. He could have just left on his own. Um, but I would I would be wondering if he left on his own. Was it because he was not really that happy anymore with the way the game was going? And it wasn't like he's like, I'm not really contributing anymore. Like if, he, if he's that guy in the meeting who's like, OK, we should do this. And the entire rest of the table goes, no, we should do this. Even if you're the game lead, like at some level you go, if everyone else is saying it except me, maybe I'm out of touch here. And he could have walked away at that point. Um, that's a, I think is a real possibility, but on top of that too, maybe they said, uh, Hey, like Sam said, this, you know, great job in the beginning, you know, game was really fresh, but we fell behind very, very quickly. There was no really no answers for it. Um, and not in a great spot right now. And the way they're looking at Overwatch two, maybe weren't totally happy with it and said, Hey, maybe we should go with someone else. I think those are the possibilities. My now, I I do want to get Frida's opinion, but first I'm going to head over to Samito because I know, Samito, you had like a couple things I felt like you were wanting to chime in there, so I'll let you have your piece. Um, First of all, I agree largely with what you said, except for the part that Overwatch 1 couldn't go that direction. Rocket League did it, and they're beating us now in, in search results on Google Trends. So mm -hmm. I to say that Overwatch 1 couldn't do it, I think just isn't true, considering we have all of these skins coming out a year in advance. We could have, like, the same way that the, we almost have a battle pass with some of these events that the, like the Kanzeka challenge these are all good things but like in my opinion like they weren't like why aren't we doing seasonal battle passes with that stuff Qu couldn't those events be and this is kind of getting into the nitty-gritty mm -hmm. so actually it won't mm -hmm. go there but just just to the point where you said that overwatch one couldn't do it i completely disagree because look at a game like rocket league who did change to that model who mm -hmm. did have and, and again you're right we didn't have to pay a penny for a lot of these skins but at the same time if I was in charge, what I would have done, I would have said, okay, you don't necessarily have to buy the battle pass. If you have a certain amount of play hours or you do X and competitive or you do something, reward the people who are still sticking around in yep. more ways than one. So you don't have to buy it, but those players who are coming back and forth, if they want in, maybe they will. And ultimately, I really don't think it's a bad thing as long as you price it fairly. Like There's plenty of fair ways to implement this and allow players to play to earn. I think play mm -hmm. to earn and pay to get can be incorporated in a balanced way to where it has a nice media, but I'm not going to go off on that. I just, I, that's the only point I disagree on the rest of it. I think he's sure. spot on. Yeah. I think if you want to hear more about Samito's full take, do check out his video on, I think it's titled why Jeff had to go. So check that out on his YouTube. It's, it, it's a really good video, I think, and a good explanation of his thoughts. Now I'm going to head over to Frito quite a bit to touch on there, Frito, but uh, any of those that really pique your interest. Yeah. Hi everybody. Uh, Mr. Devil's advocate here. Um, going to be my job i think throughout this show other than uh, uh relentlessly agreeing with everybody but i i can go like so many different ways uh in questioning but it's interesting to think back uh just to progress the, the conversation here a little bit that overwatch was a pioneer for microtransactions for the game industry in terms of like it popularized loot boxes so although i agree to a point at the same time loot boxes being in a triple a game in the way that it is like they sort of redefined their own monetization model and i'm not exactly sure what that says like at the t we forget about it now because the mm. fortnites of the world have gone in and the rocket leagues and everything everything sam says is, is true mm -hmm. but it's just it's just weird like it's hard to know uh if i actually agree with flats or not when he says jeff's not into the what let, let, well let's let's label it a different name and make it maybe dress it up as a uh, as steel man it a bit 
exploitative business t tactics, right? Like fair business model. This should be something we're like, yeah, of course we, we clamor for this. This is exactly what we want. And there's a lot of fans. Uh, and I think we can get in a bit of a, uh, um, echo chamber among ourselves uh, agreeing on this. And I, I agree with you guys about free to play, but a lot of fans hate this stuff. And yep. this is a aspect that they love about Blizzard and want them desperately to not get rid of completely because they've already put it in other games. I mean, uh, recently Hearthstone had a battle passy style revamp to its monetization structure and that was always free to play but they're like oh now you're you're, you're trying to like just give us less gold than before the economy <laughs> works a little different and but it's weird because some players love it so like with that as an example uh as a casual player of hearthstone i love having the, these extra little challenges i can do and it gives me something to shoot for other people feel trapped by it like oh now i have to work it like a job as opposed to um, Overwatch, where it's completely aimless, and it's like you say, if you don't want any of the skins, you don't have to uh, pay to get them, but if you do want them, and I, I realize now the light behind me is actually <laughs> going crazy. I'm trying to block it with my drone <laughs> dome, but it's, it's not quite working. Sorry, uh, webcam watchers. <laughs> but uh, uh, the, the, the thing I don't like about Overwatch is, is that it is so aimless, and I think that's, we're losing the hook, right? All these other games are coming out with these... Um, Skinner box, like, you know, uh, hooks, and we're, we're hoping that the loot box model was enough, but really it's not. It, like, it doesn't really give you that end game feel to, like, keep playing it. Uh, whereas, as evil as some of those exploitative business tactics are, they also give you psychological rewards. So it doesn't have to be pure evil. It can be if it, like, ropes you in, and all of a sudden now you're, you're, you're just paying out the wazoo to make your, uh, your, your, your Clash of Clans team as strong as it needs to be, spending thousands of dollars, right? Like, nobody... We don't want that, right, obviously. So mm -hmm. there's, like, two ends of this this argument, and it, it's tough it's tough for me to navigate it because uh, my other devil's advocate point is I don't even know if any of this is in any way relevant. Like, what if he just doesn't want a dev anymore for Blizzard? Like, maybe he just he's tired of the negotiations just in general. I don't know. I, I don't know if I, w I would jump to believe that it is a philosophical difference because w Jeff had a lot of sway over there. Like, if he said something, stuff happens. And I, I maybe he got forced out bec because of the way it was working. But I, I think... Everything that was leading to, it was my anticipation that Overwatch 2 is going to come out and be this massive success. I don't even think they need to do the things we think they need to do. They, they might if they want PvP to succeed and compete with these other games. Like, I agree with that. But I, I think Overwatch 2 is going to be a massive success. Because if you just look at the sales of anything else they make, like, if they make, when they make a new Diablo, it's going to be massive. Huge game on all the consoles and everything. It's just, it blows so many games off the water. And I think Overwatch 2 as well. I don't even think it needs PvP. I want it. And I want free to play. And I want Target tournaments and clans and all these other features and stuff but from their business model i don't think they actually need it as much as we're trying to make it seem like they do Be like i i think us as creators sometimes we lose the uh return on investment for these games where you can be a Fortnite, but to compete with a Fortnite, you need to pay uh, hundreds and hundreds of devs now they're trying to do that but it, like it, success is a relative thing. It depends on what you put in, right? It depends. Like if you, if they're not paying for the devs to keep Overwatch alive and they don't get any money out of it, it's like, eh, the business just sort of like, oh, we'll just get money from World of Warcraft and Warzone and the stuff that actually makes money. They, they don't necessarily need it. Like we think they need it, but that's not necessarily how their business model works. And I know they really like dominating the boxed model as they call it. Uh, so I'm going off on like a whole nother tangent that sounds like I'm disagreeing, yeah, but it's a good point though. Realistically, I, I actually do agree with Sam and I'm like, well, yeah, they should just make it free because that's what the entire rest of the industry does uh, for obvious reasons. And Blizzard's weird with this kind of stuff, man. They, they, they're really good at spinning the, the numbers into, into looking like it's a victory when we all know it's not right. And, and the, the Q times tell you enough that just Q times in the game uh, alone, I think, will uh, tell you that the game's not in a great spot. Um, quick play's okay, but uh, ranked definitely has, has just been rough for a very long time, it feels like. Mm -hmm. I could say more, but I'll stop it there. I think we made enough <laughs> full sentences. No, it was, I think it was a very good. fair point. Um, yeah, I think I think even from the interview that we said, so for those of you unaware, Aaron did an interview recently with, I've forgotten who it was now, but... Um, even even in that interview, he didn't give a lot away. But one of the things he did say, the interviewer directly asked him, you know, there's business models going around from Apex and these other free-to-play games and Fortnite and stuff. Do you guys feel the pressure to compete? Do you guys feel the pressure to change to it? 
and Aaron gave a very, very plot polished Blizzard response, which was like, you know, here at Blizzard, we do it a different way and we'll find our own way that suits. And I can already see Samito shaking his head. So I guess what Frito is saying is that is kind of there. They don't necessarily see it the way we see it, but Samito, how do you feel? I believe he, the just to clarify what he said, I believe he did say, essentially, the paraphrase of it is that I would, say, I think is accurate, is that we will produce faster, but we'll still care about quality. So he sort of, he sort of uh, implied that they might lower the quality standard a bit, or at least like produce more, but they'll still be like industry leaders in quality, I think, is, is the goal from what I'm like translated from how he answered that. Like, because in comparison, as much as we love these free-to-play games, they come out broken all the time. Like, Fortnite will come out with something that everyone's raging about on Twitter. I can't even remember what the last thing was. They're like, I don't know. They, I don't play some that game. Or some shit. Like, Who knows? Right, right, yeah. there's, like, there's a robot that's killing everybody. And it's like, like it's a sword at some point. Unbalanced. There's a sword. Warzone has had a fair share of bugs, too. Break. Right. Warzone has a lot of bugs. Valorant is breaking all the time. So, like, we... You know, no game dev's I, perfect, I, man. You can't predict some of that stuff. You gotta yeah, cut I, them some slack yeah. here. And I think there. the, truth is, I, yeah, I know the, you the do. expectations of the industry have have gone to that point where that's like kind of acceptable. It's like, well, you balance the game all the time or, or change it yeah. all the time. It's, Obviously, it's, it's gonna happen. Blizzard's kind of living in a different era where they they're a little bit more precious about it, and they're gonna have to let loose a bit of that. I think. Well, that, that's happened to Overwatch plenty of times, too. I mean, uh, that old Hanzo, when right before his rework came out, the scatter arrow cooldown went from 10 to 8 because Storm Arrow was going to be 8, and I was spamming scatters off CD. It was a great time. Tanks didn't love it. <laughs> um, sorry, Frito. Uh, <laughs> but, no, I mean, listen, I want to have faith in Aaron. I want to have faith in this team. But where are the damn results? It's about time the community and the content creators start asking that. Because from the, let me speak from a strictly a content creator's perspective here, right? Not the overall business like Frito was talking about, which I think is a very valid point. Whatever Activision Blizzard's goal, like bigger goals are, dictate a different answer from us about what it is that we need to do with Overwatch, right? Or or any of these smaller projects when they could just rely on Warzone and WoW to, to, to drive that revenue up, right? It really depends on what we're being asked to do. So that's that's it for that. But from a content, content creator's perspective, I... I'm almost spiteful towards Blizzard because the content creators don't know what they're missing because they never, the ones that stuck around never went to the other games that treat them way better. More content and more <laughs> skins means more for guys like Frito to cover, right? Creator codes mean more revenue streams for these content creators to stay and invest more time and drive more traffic to the game. This model works. And for three years, we have been left behind and barely be, been given shit. And, like, I, I'm not spiteful towards it. Like, I, 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 I'm trying to figure out how it is that I feel. I'm just disappointed. You know what I mean? I'm just disappointed because these are the people that stick thick and thin throughout your damn game. And you're telling me it's taken three years to give us fucking nothing? And I know these people work damn hard, but at what point do we say good fucking riddance? At what point? I'm at that point. I'm done. I love him to death. I'll be back for Overwatch 2. I'll be in and out probably till then, but I've got to start looking for other opportunities. This is the damn business. I can't run my show on a sinking ship. I'm going to go to the game within Activision Blizzard because I still love the company and I respect the company. They work hard. They make great titles. I personally think they're the best in the industry, Right. I'm going to go to a title and bust my ass over there that treats me as an asset that empowers me to make more revenue, to push more content, that rewards me. The more that I help them, the more they help me, right? Where the fuck is that? Where's that been? It's not here. So I don't give a damn what he says. If you want to speak to your content creators and your people, do it. Yep. You guys are damn talented. You have the most talented dev studio on the freaking planet. Genius, creative minds, talented artists, the best of the damn best. Where are the results? No Stan, let me found. ask you a question. Yeah. When? I mean, you've been over on Overwatch for a long, long time. But yeah, large. How long into being a creator did it take for you to get your first, like, couple interactions with Blizzard itself? Oh, I mean. Uh... Rough estimate. What, what do you mean by interact? Just like talking with somebody? Whether they, whether it's like talking with someone, like they, they're like, oh, hey, like we're like, like, you know, like they, them reaching out to me as a content yes. creator. Yes. And they're like, it hey, like, you know, we want to keep you. 
2019. It was, it when was did when you start I started making content with them. Um, I wasn't was a huge games. content creator because I was on YouTube. I was, it was back when I was small. It, it was I, I mm-hmm. started full time in 20, 2018. I believe 20 is the whole point I'm going to make. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. It was 2018, but it wasn't until I started playing contenders and they were going to plan overwatch Two that Molly. It's me. Molly. Um, Mm -hmm. reached out to me. Um, she just like randomly followed me on Twitter. I guess I got on their list somehow for planning contenders, making contenders. And that's when we got all the BlizzCon invites for 2019 Mm -hmm. Before Metro ruined it and leaked fucking everything. (laughs) Yeah. Go ahead. Always was everything. But what I was going to say though is, uh, you know, a lot of people have gone, you know, trying some Apex and stuff. And uh, someone who was a little bit ahead of us is Karq. He was a little ahead of us. I think Karq was playing for me like two months, maybe a month and a half. And he actually got invited in to test the arena game mode. And is going to have like sponsored streams with EA to play Apex after like two months. Good job. Two months. Like, don't get me wrong. I love Karq. And, you know, he's the reason I can say this is because he already said it on his stream publicly. You know, I, I knew about this for yeah. like a while, but like. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he yeah. publicly talked about it, so it's okay now. But I kind of wanted to sit there and be like, "Oh God!" I just felt my voice just go, "Uh oh, what are you doing?" Um, <laughs> it took them like a month and a half, two months to be like, "Oh, hey, that guy, that's a content creator. That's switch over to our game, make good stuff, they make good videos. Let's get him on board." Boom, and they pulled him in. Yeah. <sighs> like, how's it make you feel? I mean, personally, like, don't get me wrong. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's 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 not it doesn't get me like, you know, I wasn't that big of a creator for a long time. But I mean, it took almost, I think, like nine months before I even got someone to say even hello. Like, be like, oh, hey, like you stream this game. Nice. You need anything? Let us know. It's like and, uh, and that's why an automated system with supported creator code would be it, it's just so much better. And again not to say blizzard has not done this. they actually have like done like certain things with certain content creators but like mm-hmm. there's only so far what blizzard's able to do with their current model can go and that's my big problem with it because apex has been poaching overwatch since it came out that was its target was overwatch mm-hmm. they were targeting patches on our patch dates they were targeting our players they came for us people forget that they came for us and they won <laughs> And I was screaming about this, and everyone was like, oh, you're just being fucking paranoid. You, you stupid, whatever, people, t- toxic shit or me, whatever, true, not wrong. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, are we going to ignore that this is happening? And these other studios do a great job. They deserve credit. They understand that the content creators need to be treated as assets, and I'm not saying that Blizzard doesn't. I'm not saying that Blizzard doesn't. But because of the model specifically, that Apex and these other games have, they're just able to do more. Yeah, They're able to I, do more, and we just need to adapt, and we need to grow. We need to get back on the front lines of the industry. And on the most Again. simple level, too. Like, uh, Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, no, you go first, man. I'll make it really quick. I, you know, one of the biggest things is being on the front of the launcher, right? Like, all like careers like, oh, like, you know, being on the front of the launcher, big honor, it's, you know, it's nice. The last launcher event had no Twitch drops. Now, I know you're on YouTube, <laughs> But that's a yeah. big thing for Twitch. Everyone's viewership goes way up during those events. Mm-hmm. Well, the launcher people got an extra hundred viewers at max. Like, mm-hmm. how how to how how the living fuck did we lose the one thing we had in drops? Yeah, I, this this one's over my head. Listen, first of all, I don't belong on the launcher. That's 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 your space. You take the launcher. They can get people better than me for it. They they should. They, I don't belong there. I'm too I'm too critical. They they need to get better. They need to get posted. I would I would call flats a poster boy. Look at you over there chugging your water like a healthy man while I'm drinking <laughs> bourbon. You, you handsome bastard. Um, too kind. But yeah, nah, dude, don't, don't mention it. Um, but you know, I mean, you're right. And it's but the, the see, I don't even blame the people in charge of that. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, there's probably so much strife going on right now, like in the team and debate and hard work. And I, listen, no one has ever denied the talent of this team. As Frito said, Blizzard's just these people are top fucking notch. They always have been. No, no one's What's denying been? that. But it all, to me, comes down to the same thing of the inability to adapt to the faster paced, now mainstream specifically gaming. And the EA, EA, the people with the worst rep ever in, in gaming after the whole pay to win bullshit right are doing better than us and like this this is my point to the community i want you guys to just honestly like did not even come from me because i know my takes are hot and people don't like that that's that's totally okay 
sure. But at, at what point, I want you to look in the mirror and ask yourself, what point do you say good riddance were the results? I'll ask. That's it. So I'm going to, I'm going to channel my inner Frito here and devil's advocate a little bit, because while I agree with you guys, and again, the thing is, is I have to try and separate myself here as a content creator personally versus a content creator to be a voice for the community. And I guess what I would add is the community and Blizzard probably don't give a fuck <laughs> about the things that we've just said, because mm -hmm. to them, it's not even, oh, this, I got, I'm, I'm only assuming, but to them, it's like on the periphery for them. The content creators are incidental to the success. Whereas again, like the, the games that you cited, Apex, Fortnite, when you have the financial model free to play, content creators are essential to your growth and your business model. You need them because it's a free to play game. So you need them to constantly drive the traffic and bring people in. Whereas again, I'm going to go back to Frito's point, which is, I guess Blizzard are just confident enough in their, in their game and their product. They just think, well, we don't need, we don't need hype. We don't need Twitch viewers. We don't need content creators to stick around. We're going to put out a great game. People are going to buy it and be all end all. And they've never been the most chummy with their content creators anyways. Like, again, I'm not, I'm not blaming them, but they don't really give us a lot. They don't give us early access to anything. They don't give us news that like patches are like <laughs> earlier. I was like, could you let us know that patches are dropping so we don't wipe our replay code so that the content, so that the content I make for your game doesn't get wiped before I can make it. We don't even get like a, a courtesy two hour notice. So I don't, and again, I'm not trying to be spiteful about it. I just think that from them, it's just like, well, we hear you, but you're incidental to our success. You know, other like uh, someone's asking early access to what? Like other other games get early access to new seasons. They get early access to new Our heroes. Parky's getting invited to Arena. Yeah, Valky's Parky doesn't even play Apex. And he's getting invited to the new season. So and it's I just like we get that for over for for um, Overwatch beta, but again, not after this show, Sam, not after, after this, this show, no. We're all, I mean, we're all on the blacklist can't, now. Can't cancel my ass. I'm willing to take one for the team. It's, I don't want a free ride for anything. I'm going to grind it out and learn the YouTube algorithm and do it my fucking self. I don't care. I'll, I'll make it happen. Um, but I don't know. Sorry, Frito. Do you have anything to say? Because you haven't talked yet, and I don't want to cut you off. I mean, I, I'm letting you guys go. Uh, it's, it's I, I just didn't from... want to cut you off. Sorry. No. Well, no. I. Um... I, I interjected to troll you a little bit, but uh, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> in, in um, as a content creator, you, there's a, a certain like ratio where people just don't put up with you complaining when you r reach a certain privileged status. And I, I feel like uh, when you grow a channel the size of your Overwatch, we're just not allowed to say any of these things. Like uh, the the like the, the community we reach is just a different scale so it's much more akin to like that attitude svb has which is we don't care about your problems basically <laughs> like that's 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 what uh most uh players and viewers think so uh, mm -hmm. um to try to translate this to people who may be of that persuasion um i will say um sam was saying that you know there's these other games that have done these things we went over to valorant and had great success and was open uh welcome and open arms uh and the attitude there is entirely different. Um, I don't find it too useful to to harp on about this too much because it's it's I, I'm I'm mainly don't disagree with the attitude that it's like well it's our problem so uh, I kind of just don't want to uh, beat on this drum too hard. Mm -hmm. But the, the the truth is for the health of the game, which is what I do care about, I do think this matters because. Uh, you look at a channel like Hitscan over in Valorant. They decided to stay with with Valorant. We kind of petered off on a little bit. We we were seeing great success with it. Uh, we left just because of time commitments, basically. But the the game and the devs. I mean, we we were like immediately straight in talking with one of the lead devs all the time, basically. Like, and he would have he would, now granted, and Morella left the company at Riot, but. Uh, and he may just be a specific kind of outliner kind of guy, so maybe it's not fair to compare. But uh, it was a completely different atmosphere, basically, where the... I, I guess it's just like the corporate culture, almost, of Riot, where although they have a lot of downsides that you hear about, one upside is that they speak like real gamers, whereas Blizzard, I feel they feel pressured and to some degree perhaps need to, based on the the media, which I might get into in a second, but they, they just code everything with PR all the time to like a disgusting degree. If you take one of them aside off the record, then it's like, you're talking to a human, but, uh, I mean, it, we, 
your Overwatch hasn't had an exclusive interview with the dev in, uh, 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 I can't, can't remember. I had hair back then. I, I don't know. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Shit, I might be bald by the and next time. I, I wonder why that is. I'm just, I'm just gonna. Yeah, I wonder why that could be. I mean, I, I don't want to imply anything that's too harsh or I'm too molding. negative, or uh, you know, some people ask real questions and other people let people get away with bullshit the whole time and and don't ask follow ups. So I, there you go. So uh, that's my little wine session for you, <laughs> so uh, which doesn't point. matter to me, by the way. Like I, everything Sam said was like, oh, so what? Like, I'm not going to bend over backwards and, and lick the boot. Like, I'm not doing that. No, like I I'll give I'll give you as far as you deserve, basically, is my attitude. Like, I'll be fair, but I'm not going to I'm not just going to take that's it. What you got you to know? Do. Go ahead. Flat anyway, go ahead. To your, so to your point, though. OK, and, and I know exactly what you're talking about because I've made a video for it. I made a few of them. <laughs> the whole oh that's not really my problem thing but it's not each individual person's problem it's actually is though on a goal on a player base scale so for example free to play you talked about very early like early on uh, and especially in my opinion it, and especially with my youtube my youtube is much more a casual overwatch audience most of my twitch viewers are more of the they're every day like they love overwatch they watch it every day you know like that that's like that's their thing um with the casual audience though they hate the idea of free to play they hate the idea of uh, of microtransactions and paying all this more money and stuff like that they hate it now why well because where they're at right now they're already in they're already in they don't got it like they're in the they're in the cool crowd you know like like who cares with the people that are outside the cool crowd? Like they're not in, right? But the problem is, is the cool crowd's only about ten people, right? The problem is, is they want that crowd to stay those ten people, which is good for nobody. It's not good for them. It's not good for creators. It's not good for the devs. It's not good for the Overwatch League. It's not good for anybody. It's not good for them because their queue times are longer. It's not good for them because there's less people playing every day. That means if you queue up every single day of Overwatch and you bump into the same four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people that you don't like every single day and you're cycling out your avoids and you're like, oh, I hate this. If the player race is much bigger, you probably never see those people ever again, especially if you're like, Outside of GM, in GM, we see this mostly the same people every day, whether they're on different accounts or same account, whatever. But like, if I queue, if I queue from from twelve o'clock EST to six o'clock EST, I will see the same names every single day. I know exactly. I know their schedules. I literally know people's schedules at this point. Like, I and I don't know them. I like, you know what I mean? I just just by being in games with them. But if the player base is much bigger, those queue times go down, which we talked about earlier, is a big problem. Those 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 games are more diverse. You don't have to worry about like whether you're in the same game with people you don't like, or there's more people to actually meet and be friends with and and, and want to play with. Like there's just more people in the community. That's good for the player base. It's good for creators because there's more people watching. Viewership on Overwatch is going down. Like it's and it's going kind of quick. I don't know if you've seen like any charts or any viewership stuff, but it's going. It's it's dropping. Like it's it, it's pretty fast. It's kind of scary. And that's good for creators because if creators are, are are making content and there's a larger player base, there's more people to watch the content. The creators win. It's good for the Overwatch League because if the Overwatch League is free to play or the game is free to play, and I have this experience when I used to work in the Overwatch League with Boston and I worked as a community corner and it was very much grassroots, very much like working with people. Like, they, 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 you know, they're under the same roof as the Patriots. And like, we literally were talking to like people at Patriots training camp about stuff. And like, they would actually be super interested. And then they found out they had to pay for the game. And just, you just see the lights go out in their eyes and go, yeah, I'm not interested anymore. If the game is free to play, there's more people that are, have a less barrier to entry to get in and play the game. And if they play the game, they're more likely to be able to watch the esport than someone who doesn't play the game. Because I don't watch... League of Legends. I've never played League of Legends, but if I played League of Legends, I'd probably be more open to watching League of Legends a few times because I would actually kind of understand what's happening. But you can't get a larger base, and Overwatch League can't grow because the player base isn't growing, and there's a barrier of entry that keeps it from growing. And of course, the last point, the devs. Of course, they want to see more people playing their game. If there's more people buying the game on the current version. People buying the game, that looks good for them. That looks good for their investors. That looks good for everybody in the company. If you go to an Overwatch 2 meta, meta uh, you know, microtransaction, and there's more people buying the battle pass, there's more people playing the game, there's more people buying the skins. That says, oh, hey, we should be making content every week because if the content goes out every week and it's getting bought every week, that's very, very good for investors. Investors like that. They like that there's more money coming in and they can be like, oh, hey, 
we should probably keep making more content faster and faster because if you go it faster and faster and it actually pays off like you said before like how much you get it you put in versus how much you get out if they put in a certain amount and they get a lot out of it and they put in a little more and they get even more out of it they're going to be influenced to do that more so where does that come back to all four benefit but that one person at the beginning says they're an individual that doesn't want it. But in real reality, they're actually an entire group. One person doesn't want it because more Smurfs, more cheaters. Wham. But it's good for the entire player base. You can't think of them as an individual. You have to think of them as a group. That's my opinion on it. Like, Straight facts. Literal it's facts. It's a tough you... argument to follow. Not yeah, I, I was literally trying to poke holes in your argument. Flats out of just out of devil's advocate because as, as the podcast host, I've got to present the counter argument. But I'm just like, my inner Sorry. voice is like, yes, flats too much to, to really pull something out. Facts. I think it's, I, I, I'll do my best, uh, although I think everything you said is true. And if you're not at four free to play, you can clip that. Or if your friend's not or something, share, share that section. Because I, I think that pretty much is, is what we all know to be the case. But it, it's, it, it's not like Blizzard didn't know free to play was a thing. Like, um... League of Legends had already been dominating the esports space by the time Overwatch was. I'm trying to think back to. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's it was already out loud and proud top esport, so they know what free to play is. Mm -hmm. The business model for Overwatch almost was rebelling against League of Legends, but also like Call of Duty because it's like a combination of of the two, where all the heroes and all the maps and everything is all included. And you never have you never have to buy any part of it. Whereas in league, you gotta buy the new heroes that come out, right? I'm trying to remember. There's like a, an economy for that. Like that's in a in a way that's like a weird uh, paywall. I'm trying to remember what it's exactly called. It's not like pay to win, but it's like pay to get a part of the game, or you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like pay to compete, essentially. Which which mm -hmm. I think ultimately is what we just gotta realize that whether that means pay to compete for. Uh, and I'm making up that term. I think there's an actual one. Uh, someone in the chat probably has already said it, but um, whether that's for ranked or or whatever, like that's, it's better because the the casual, Hearthstone is like this as well. And I keep bringing that up. But if you want to like actually compete in Hearthstone, compete like on the ladder, you probably got to spend hundreds of dollars in order to keep up with the top deck, uh, especially if you're a new player and just coming in, right? But the cool thing to me with Hearthstone is that there's all these other things you could do for free anyway w and and play. Like, you don't have to be in the competitive pool. And the same thing, I think, works for these other games where you got to pay for the heroes, which I, I think ultimately Blizzard just gambled on a business model that worked for a year. It was like, we, we can't, we're sitting here talking like it wasn't the biggest game in the world ever at the time, right? Only like, shooter you know, to win game of the year. Only it one in a people's minds. Away. It was like, all the maps and all the heroes are included? What? Are you kidding me? That's, that's insane. Call of Duty. Yeah. Like, a lot of it is, I think, it's, it's saying we're not Activision. It's it's like, I, I, I you know, we're, I persona of them a little bit, but maybe maybe it's Jeff say, saying, you know, uh, at, announcing Overwatch 2, like, mm -hmm. we're not Call of Duty. We're Blizzard. Like, we're published by them, yeah, but we're not coming out every year. We think it sucks that a new cod i'm gonna put that in brackets he didn't say the words but a new cod comes out every year and you got to buy it to play with your friend and there's a dlc pack for the maps and this and the dlc for the guns and and at that time i think as well there was the the literally pay to win loot boxes for the guns in advanced warfare like around the the, the time as well big drama like <laughs> we forget so all this it, it's so much activism oh, nonsense that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was funny looking back now Right. Different like, variants like, and stuff. Garbage. That that's over the top uh, as well. But but at the same time, when you when you tap into a bit of that, then like the, the little bit of evil, right? It's like like you gotta sacrifice that one baby. That's like like that yeah. one baby. And then we have enough baby blood to like make everything work. Make everyone have just one child, Jeff. Just sacrifice one. Oh, okay, so that probably not my best analogy, but you see my <laughs> point. Right? Like right now. one one evil deed, right? That, where yeah. it's like letting in some of that exploitative microtransactions nonsense for some of the players. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I come down on it and I assume you guys all agree that like you can do it fairly to not be over the top exploitative. Like, like I'm, like I'm hacked into some sort of yeah. drug and I just got to pay yeah. through the nose. Like I'll pay a bit, but, but like, I think there's something about that. And, and this is the thing that I try to tell people. Cause I did stop, step over into Valorant, made content for that, see the ecosystem for that. The people that play that 
just it's so cool that the the community of how much people care about these super expensive skins right and then you buy it and you, you have this sense of pride and people want to be better and they want to win and they want to compete like that's what we all want for overwatch but instead we have this like super casual community on the flip side and and i, I don't know what's the right call i wish we had that kind of atmosphere where like ranked felt competitive and whatnot but mm. uh, on, on the other hand, like, I, I think Blizzard understands, especially the NA audience, like South Korea is a little different with this, their community yeah. there's, is super hardcore, it's, but, it's like, but the, the NA audience, they really like that casual atmosphere. So I, I think this is the, the only reason we haven't done it so far is that like problem with the West and, and like the, the space that Blizzard occupies in uh, the consumer's mind where they're like, they're good guy, you know what I mean? And as soon as, as soon as we, we go over to being like these other games, although they're successful, it's like, we're just, we're with the rest of the industry, even if we do, they do it as fair as possible. So I'm, I'm a little torn on that, but that's my piece. Well, I think if anyone's capable of finding that middle ground, it is Blizzard's team. Like you just said, they did it before and I have full confidence they're gonna do it again. My only mm -hmm. qualm is that it's taken this long and it's just the free to play, dude. It's it's like the, the free to play, the, the content consistency, it just hasn't adapted. And I'm praying. And I do have that is the one thing I do. The creative minds at that company, at that the team are top notch. They just are always have been, always will be. But and I will also say to the people that Flats was mentioning that say, like, you know, oh well, I don't want this. I want to be a part of the end. I like that they don't do this. You if you like Overwatch and you care about this franchise, you should put what's best for it first. And what I have to say to you is check your ego because goddamn, if you give a shit about this game, then you should want what's best for it. Here's the weird it's thing, plain Sam. plain and simple. And, and plain and simple. Get it, the it, fuck out of here. I interact with enough of these people that are, are the opposite persuasion to actually get a, a gist of how they think. And they actually think what I'm about to say. Oh no. The, they don't play the game, but don't want to see it go free because it, it's almost like, it's like a loss aversion thing or something. It's like, well, I paid into it. I got my time out of it. I just want them to make a new fair business model product for Overwatch 2. So they don't, act, it's weird. And they feel like they can weigh in on this, like as if they have a vote. Like, like I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's weird, just, but there's a lot of people who, who feel that way where they have ownership over the community, even though they're not playing anymore. So well, that's well, fair. Well, that's well, fair. Well, and I get it. I get it. But if the game goes free, they'll be able to get more out of the experience. And at that point, you just got to put your chips to the side. Be like, listen, I'm going to sacrifice my, my, it literally is just a, a dumb ego. And that's coming from me. My ego gets out of hand too sometimes. That's fine. So I know what, I know when I see it, you know, pot calling the kettle black, damn it. But listen, like at, at that point, they're like, I think they're, oh my God, all these Smurfs. Phone verification requirement. That's what Warzone does. And yes, it has problems, but it's better off. Right. I so I just don't get, it's just, it's so stupid it just should get laughed out of the room. Like literally throw these, the peanuts in the pe peanut gallery in the damn trash where they belong and, and cut the shit. That's all I ask. Stop. You know what the best part of that though is? What? Is if the player race explodes in size, then those peanuts are so small in the corner anyways, it doesn't, they're gone. Sorry, think... it doesn't matter. Like, listen, I, I stand by my point. My, shit, the stuff I say doesn't matter. We're all just little peanuts in the damn gallery, little sunflower That's seeds true. in the bag. You could spit us out, throw us to the side and everything will still go smooth. But I want, you know what? I want to get planted in the ground and grow into a big old sunflower. All right. <laughs> That's what I want to see with the game. And with, with that terrible mentality from these people who have egos because they bought the game, shut up. That's all I have to say. Go ahead, SPD. Now, well, I want to see the Samito sunflower cosplay now, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, catch what me I was going to say, what I was going to say is, again, I, I want to try really hard to try and channel the differing perspective here. I think two things that I've seen crop up, because I've had these arguments on stream as well, where I've literally asked people, I'm like, guys, please tell me why those of you who are against free-to-play, please give me your arguments. Because I want to know, I want to understand why those who are against free-to-play are against it. I think two big things come down. I think one thing is that this, with this being all speculation, we're speculating a reasonable business model, right? We're all like, well, why wouldn't they just do the, the smart, reasonable thing that all these other games do? Whereas a lot of people who are naysayers, I feel they feel... They don't trust Activision, basically. There's a, another thing going on here, which is we don't necessarily see Activision as over, evil overlords, but a lot of people do. A lot of people do see Activision as this big evil company who, if given the chance, 
you know, give them an, give them an inch and they'll run a mile, right? They'll make it the most scummy exploitative game ever. They'll make pay to pay to buy heroes, right? Like imagine Brig meta where you had to pay to buy Brig, right? That's what these people are seeing. So there's one element they of that. They don't do that in Warzone. They don't do it in Warzone. And again, that's that's our thinking. That we're like, they will be reasonable, of course. Why wouldn't they be reasonable? But for these people, I think that is what's going on, where they feel like, well, we don't want to go down that route because what if they do? What if they do turn to the dark side, Anakin? And then the other thing is, I think that people feel that they want to know what they're getting into when they quote unquote, like when they get into a game, they want to know, okay, I'm going to churn out 50 bucks and that's it. Because I think a lot of people, and it's an argument I've struggled to understand, but I'm trying to channel it. A lot of people don't really even trust either themselves or the other community to manage their own finances to the point where they feel like, if we go free to play, but I want all the skins. Well, then pay for the skins you want. But I don't want to pay for all the new skins. I just want to pay 50 bucks and know I'll get every skin from now until forever. Like, why is that unreasonable? Whereas we're of the perspective like, well, you don't have to get every skin then. But a lot of, again, trying to understand this argument, a lot of people feel like, I just want to know that I pump in 40 bucks and I'll get everything. I don't want the constant investment or the time investment of a battle pass that I have to level up. I just want to play the game once a week, but still have all the content. That's, you that's here's what I, what I say to that. In war zone, you don't... Go ahead, Flats. I'm going to back Here's you what I say here. to that. You have skins to goddamn buy. You have content to buy. We have no content to buy. We have no content, period. <laughs> Would you rather have content to buy than have it's, no it, content at all? It's their egos, dude. They're like, they're like, we're gonna take the moral high ground. Of fucking what? There's nothing there, dumbass. All right, are these not the same people who pay for their damn WoW subscription? <clears throat> like, shut up. Like, I'm sorry. You are just an idiot. Like, hot take. You're just dumb. <laughs> Get off your damn high horse and accept that this is how the industry works. It does well. If I go, I don't buy anything in Warzone. And you know what? I still wipe the floor with kids. I go in there, I smoke them, and I go to sleep. That's what I do. Nothing changes. If you don't like the, the bullet tracers that shoot purple, then don't fucking buy them and play the game. There's no problem. None. Literally none. So the fact... You know what, SBB? I, I, I don't want to explore space. I'm, I'm happy with Earth. <laughs> the fuck do I know about rocket science? Nothing. So you know what? I don't say shit about it. These people need to shut the hell up or educate themselves. Tough shit, man. You, if you're, are you happy with nothing, which is basically what we're getting, scraping the, bottle, the, scraping the bottom of the barrel? You know what actually happens? Like, it's, it's literally what Flats said. The more content you put out with the free to, the more the more consumers you have in with the free to play model, which means more people want to buy more, which means more creators want to peddle it more and, and try to get more people to buy stuff, right? And after that, the company makes more revenue, which they can then ideally, unless it's going to the CEO's bonus, which I think is a little horse shit as well. But it goes straight back to the dev team, and you can just overall make more content and become the snowball. It's literally exactly why we left behind. I guess these people like settling. I don't aim for the moon. I care about this franchise. I want to be number one. Only game to win game of the year in 10 years is the shooter game. Only damn one. And you're telling me we can't compete? Get that beta bullshit mentality the freaking heck out of here. I can't stand it. I can't stand this pushover crap. Sorry. To, sorry. Just had to no, no. You're good. This you're good. Is, this is just, that's what, I, that's what I would say to one of those fools who think they know a damn thing about this industry. You're, you're spot on. Like, honestly, like, listen. I understand we're content creators. We're in our own little little bubble. Like, and, and people can argue, but that's cool, kid crowd. You're talking about you, so you're just one what's best. Shut up. Because if you look at look at Twitch right now, go look at Twitch right now. You see, we are behind Pummel Party right now in viewership. <laughs> what the fuck is Pummel Party? <laughs> the exactly. fuck is that's that? Point, Barbie? <laughs> like what is Pummel that? Pummel Party is like a Mario style game, but on a Steam. A budget Mario Party game? Is that what you're it, telling it, me? Yes, yes. <laughs> that's where we are right now. We're ahead of Call of Duty Black Ops uh Cold War. And oh, thank God. Art. Cold War sucked. That game behind was dog art. shit. Thank and God. Party. But, 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 like, I don't think people understand is that when a game falls off like that, everyone suffers. Because if you look at Rust, Rust is a great example in the past couple of months. Rust's viewership exploded because there was the OTV server, all the streamers went and played, and then Rust's player base exploded. Because everyone wow. wanted to play, whether they got to play with the streamers or not. 
they didn't get to because it was a private server but they saw the fun they had and and i actually got sucked into too i i look i got an invite in but like the server was dead by the time i I got in but that's not the point like the point is is like i watched for like a couple hours and i was like this game actually looks a lot of fun like i never gave it a second i've never my whole life looked at rust and thought it was fun i thought it was a game full of stream snipers it was like a bad version of arc and i thought the game was terrible then i watched people streamers content creators play it and have fun and i went oh my god i don't even care if i stream this game i just want to play it and guess what i went and i bought the game what you're telling me that model worked are you shitting me and even wow Russ is right back down again to 11, 1100 or 11,000 viewers. It had two explosions where a bunch of people bought the game. And guess what? If they were somehow able to, which Russ isn't able to, it's not the type of game, but we are. Overwatch is. They're not the type of game that can sustain a large boom like that because at some point you run out of stuff to do in the game. But in Overwatch, you still play ranked, you still play everything every day. And it's ten. It's 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 it is somewhat of a different experience, and that's how creators get on and stream every day. Overwatch for a few hours every single day of the week. I mean, I don't know how Emo does ten hours a day for the last like three that years. Built diff. He's that actually built just diff. built different. But yep. you have examples of that of people that are streaming hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, and people show up every day to watch it because they love the game. So if we took that model. And made it bigger, and we, and we cultivated the, the the content creators again, and with Overwatch Two especially that, that, and the reason we all talk about Overwatch Two is because that's the next opportunity because a large influx of players, new content, a lot of a lot of the biggest streamers are going to come play for a little while. You know, I, I it'll I, I don't hundred percent it'll be like an eight hundred k to a you know maybe a million on the day one. You know, on day one, like where everyone's playing PVE or playing PVE, probably, I mean, probably it'll be, PVE. It'll be, it'll be more than that, dude. It, it, honestly, it, it honestly could be even high. It could be, you know what I mean? It could be in, absolutely insane. And and the, that reason we all talk about Overwatch 2 as some glory, magnificent savior arc is because that's the next opportunity to then go, OK, let's try to save that. And yeah, we can't save the whole thing, but try to save a significant chunk and keep it going for as long as possible so that way the player base stays up and all those new people that maybe didn't come with the first influx start to see it with apex is a great example apex had an amazing huge flux in the beginning when they they bought every content creator to come stream then the game tanked and then they improved the game right like kind of like where overwatch did overwatch had a great launch except not like buying creators tanked kind of like where we are now now, the only difference is, is they improved. We just have this magic date. So instead of like upwards trend, it's more of like a jump, like an upwards, like, you know, little loop. And that's the next opportunity for for people to be like, oh, hey, that game's actually really good again. We should try it and then play it and enjoy it and stick around. That's the key. And on top of just making Overwatch 2 great, you have to have all the pieces working together and have them all sustaining and doing well because if they don't do well if i'm a creator let's say i'm tim the tap man and i come to overwatch and, and overwatch is fun for the first month but i get no creator codes i get no incentives to stream the game at all eastern is warzone they have con- they have content creator codes and stuff i bet he may you know he probably makes tons off of content creator codes and, and has fun with the game and everybody else that streams around him they have fun with it you know whatever the next game could be too it could be the next game that comes out in the next month it's like oh hey that game actually supports us a ton. Let's go play that one instead. It has to be all done right at the same time. And that's what I think is really important right now and being able to be like, hey, we have to look that this is the next opportunity. Let's do it right and and and, and not fuck it up. Because the dev team can do its thing, make a great game, and they, pro- and they will. But of a kind. On that, yep, on that second end, can't let the people that are going to keep that game alive beyond content slip through because if they do it could be another year or two after Overwatch 2 and we're right back where we started yeah Frida I want to I head over to you because we haven't said anything for a while so you've been brewing what's cooking I was going to attempt to uh, see if there's anything else we have um, theories wise we we, uh, we were talking about Jeff we think they, mm-hmm. they may have left due to philosophical difference one major one is maybe business model I think it's fairly there's a lot of old Blizzard things that people I don't think 
criticized accurately. I think uh, not valuing creators is is a thing at Blizzard. I hate to tell you, but I don't I don't think they value creators in the same way, or at least it. I get that vibe. That whatever. We'll just leave, leave that as it may. I've seen how it is in other other games. We've already given a couple of examples here that are public information. Uh, there's more information as well that I'm vaguely alluding to, but I, I don't know if the the relationship is uh, as respected as I think it should be. That that's uh, a thing that I think maybe uh, a change in leadership uh, isn't like signaling. That's not like the the cornerstone, but I just mean like as we get further away from the old Blizzard way, uh, whatever that is. And I, I think that's one thing. I think the um, business model, perhaps we. We went through. Um, I, I'm struggling to think if there's other pillars that we think maybe the, either the split from Jeff uh, indicated or the like new direction is indicating. Like, do we think it's going to change much or like that's how I want to try to move yeah. the conversation. Like, like, is this a good thing ultimately? Like, we're, we know how we feel. Like, we we agree. We need free, free to play. Uh, but um, I, I tend to almost think like not much changes. But maybe like one transformation away from old take? Blizzard. Go ahead. Let's go. You want a hot take? Go. I think we're gonna get major changes. I think Overwatch from the ground up is gonna change. <laughs> PvP really? and PVE. <laughs> what? what do you think that? What listen do you think to me. That listen, listen. And here is my philosophy, and this is what kind of keyed me in a little bit. The change to how the tank role is played in Overwatch is actually insane. Because that changed the entire philosophy of how the game is played right now in current day. If they are changing the game to what is considered a more fun play style, right? Everyone has kind of said brawl or like dive or like move together kind of fun stuff is a lot more fun than sitting back, back playing double sniper, double shield, resident sleeper, brig is, if you haven't seen my video, it's like booped nine people off the map. I just skill. <laughs> Good player. Sorry, I'm just saying. I think we're silver. Um, I think from the ground up, something is going to happen where it's going to change the entire philosophy of the game, of how it's played in both PVE and PVE. Sorry, PVP and PVE. And and I know it sounds crazy, and that's why it's my hot take. It's my tinfoil hat theory. But from what you guys said, it, like they don't want to give some. They don't want to give anything away. People have asked, are you, what are you going to do about PvP? And that's why they got the super PR answer on the interview. I pulled it up like, well, we were like halfway through, just like went through. And there's there's something that I think that really, really has a possibility of being true. I think BlizzCon was the embodiment of, of catering to the casual fans. And that's why we saw almost strictly PvE stuff at BlizzCon. The only PvP changes we talked about at BlizzCon were map changes, new heroes, and the changes of the tank role. Then at BlizzCon, they told us that in the coming months, they were going to announce some major upcoming news about Overwatch 2. Now, I think that the PvP player base that still exists in the game is that player base that is still tied in right now and doesn't need a major event like BlizzCon in that they can come out and 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 talk and whether it's you know i'm sure they'll have some avenue for it and be like hey we're going to change how the game is played fundamentally to try to make it more fun for players because in the past year the past couple of years we made a great game and you guys loved it but we know we can take it to the next level after you know after knowing what people like and what and and, and jeff talked about this before sam you probably know what i'm talking about is people there's a difference between the way the Blizz, the dev team thought the game should be played and the player base thought the game should be played. And that the dev team wanted everything equal. The player base wanted the fun heroes to be the most playable. And then the not fun heroes to be like niche or like whatever it might be. And there's a strong possibility, in my opinion, that in coming in Overwatch 2, that they're going or they're going to try to make it so that fun is something that is revamped. Because currently what we have rolling into Overwatch 2, we, will, we would literally be getting new heroes, a new game type, no 2CP, and new maps. What changes about PvP? Nothing. And PvP 
is what keeps a lot of those those consistent content creators and those and those people that care about the game every day coming back. That PVE crowd is much more casual. Yes, everyone was going to play it. Like I, I have already have plans of what I want to do with it and stuff like that. But I log in every day to play ranked. That's my thing. That's what most people who watch content creators play is play ranked or the occasional custom game with other creators and stuff. But they want to lock in on ranked. And I think if they are going to go the route of keeping those content creators, the, when that big influx comes, they need to make the game to the next level. Because they, they, like Sam said, is the only FPS to win game of the year as a shooter. They know they can make it even better than it currently is. I and I bet that, that there's something going to be coming. That's my guess. I hate to bust your bubble. The last time I thought they were going to do something crazy, I thought they were going to do a BR, and then they announced Hero Pools. So, <laughs> listen, man, mm, I'm all on the optimistic train. But here, I mean, I think Overwatch should have a BR. I think it's the, it, it should do it if they're smart, but it won't happen until after PDE, so it'll be probably four or five years. Um, mm -hmm. But, I mean, listen, I love the optimism, mm -hmm. and I, I, I wish I was in the same boat, but, like, I'm at the point where... I, I hope they do. First of all, I hope you're right. I hope they do something. Mm -hmm. They should do something. They, I know that they aren't stupid. Contrary to popular belief, I, I think that you know they're not stupid. They know they got to do something. They're not. Right. These, these people work hard. Frida's smirking at me over there, considering how many times you heard me rant about this shit. But I've got – I will believe it when I see it. And yep. that is the answer yep. that I want everyone in the community to start having because I want them to show up to the plate and hit the damn ball instead of sitting back and debating internally about whatever it is. And I don't, I don't know. I hope you're right. First of all, I would, I would love to see some big changes and this might actually be a good time to, after this has to be to go into the open queue talk where I personally yeah. think we need to, we might need to start reevaluating roll queues efficiency. And can we compete with the queue times of roll queue are the queue times that are bad because of roll queue or because of lack of interest in the game? And would it be more sustainable if there was a bigger player base, but I've got no faith in them doing anything this year. None. I, they want to prove me wrong. Gladly. Come on. We've stepped up to the plate for like, for you guys. It's time for you to step up to the plate for us and treat us like assets. Do what you do best and put out revolutionary shit that changes the industry and do it right. Game integrity, interest, mm -hmm. consumer interest especially has been kind of lost. Like, you know, I, I I don't know. I just don't see I don't see it happening this year. And the one thing I'm concerned about is I, I I'm concerned that Aaron's going to be a Jeff clone. And what I mean by that is, like, I, I know that Jeff – listen, I think Jeff is incredibly talented. I, this game would not be where it is. Again, only shooter win game of the year. No one else did it the entire previous decade. Unbelievable work. But the last three years, two years really, show that it just can't compete. I was personally hoping we get some new blood because in, in corporate America – Usually the new blood, getting someone from the outside, bringing them in is what will light the fire under people. And I'm, I, I need Aaron to prove himself. That's what I need. I need, I need to see some signs of life from this man. And if, if that's, you know, he was, first of all, he was very compelling in Overwatch too. Like he was like very inspiring. Like mm -hmm. when these guys do something, they do like the quality is absolutely there. I just hope they can find that. Sorry if I kind of went a little off topic there, but you know, no, I, no. I just hope that we can find that middle ground. But flats, well, I'll believe it when I see it. I, I'm, interview, I'm off the of too, but the interview, interview is actually, a bunch I think, of fluff. Well, well, they did. There, he did use terms like the next level for PvP. I'm, I think I'm directly quoting, if I'm not mistaken. Like he he knows because there was a lot of talk about PvE, but I think at some point he did say we know fans want us to bring the next level or something like that. Um, so. Uh, we can expect that with Overwatch 2 to some degree. They they didn't talk about all the changes they did for BlizzCon, but it seemed pretty obvious, and we talked about this, I think, on the previous one of the previous shows after BlizzCon, but um, it seemed like they were messing around with 5v5, but didn't really want to say it because, like, to commit with it. But um, fundamental changes like that, I think the changes Flats is talking about is already in the game, basically. Um, and I, we had it on the show notes anyway, talking about the, the, the state of the game, but... I think they finally figured out how they want the game to play um, and are like aiming towards something for once as opposed to like 
here's a new hero if it breaks the meta i don't know like that, that it just always felt like a shrug to me whereas now mm -hmm. like all the roles feel distinct and what their capabilities are like the tuning isn't always going to be perfect but at least like your expectation a tank hero does this support hero does this like in everyone's got their wacky plays to make but um mm -hmm. the game already plays pretty brawly like that and then on top of that there's th the new feature that he did say is coming he's at feature and systems which i think is a big deal um i i think it's got to be clans mode personally or or some clans functionality uh because i can't imagine what else what? would would be uh well there was a leak from blizzcon that there was a screenshot that showed on the player card that uh it said clan c9 which they had blurred originally on the broadcast but then on the forum post did not which is a typical kind of blizzard mistake didn't mention anything obviously didn't like deny it to us or anything when asked about it just didn't even respond um so it's just like an odd thing to have there like why would they have it it could be an in joke mm -hmm. it could be nothing but it, it was like a different color to like connotate like we're in a group so uh i would i would imagine something similar to um destiny actually where there's there, there's uh grouping functionality in order to try to get you to play the pve content because again we keep talking about pvp all day long but i'm telling you like they i'm almost confident they think their money maker is pve because it's the yeah. thing everyone and, and, can play it, it will be it and, will be 100 and, and it's it's something they do possibly better like all the things they dreamed they could do they can now put in because they don't have to balance it it's it can be yep. as wacky as you want it to be it's so much easier kimbo j silly stuff. kimbo j silly yeah, exactly <laughs> right that stuff like that because that's what people want to, to feel out of the game and then sometimes us trying to make it a, com a competitive esport we rob the fun out of it from for a lot of people because we're like oh uh you know uh <laughs> i'm sure there's many uh sam Ito rant about brig being overtuned and then uh, you know i'm trying to tell Thomas him like, you, you ever put in a video i'm like you have no idea how bad brig players are to like not realize that Literal you're right fucking but they get shit. destroyed when they have all these stats and they still get destroyed and they can't hit they a suck. single ability and they're they flailing suck. and they, they can't hit a stun they can't time the stun they can't hit the flail they don't skip like, garbage right so if the hair is not like players. outrageously broken they do nothing with them but yep. like I'm over here as, as someone who tries to teach the game, like, well, maybe you just are silver instead of plat. Yep. But maybe the devs, you're just ass at the game. Accept the, it, shitter. Like, sorry. The I played uh, Brig with a main tank on my uh, high plat support account when I was placing it. I literally played, I ride and just was dead on cool that. I just played Brig like a main tank and just, just dominated. It was insane. It, I mean, I, well, I, the point isn't about Brig. I just want to let, let Frito continue on. My, my, my point is we alienate people that like aren't trying to play Dota 2, right? Like, and I think. <laughs> In many ways, the game now kind of feels and reminds me of Dota in terms of you're out of position, you're dead. Boom. It's like Pudge is lurking. You know, there's all there's so many <laughs> flanks. <laughs> Hook, right? Boom, you're dead. And that's not how League plays. It's not how uh, Here's the Storm plays. I don't know. I, MOBA analogies might not work for everybody, but uh, I, I think it's pretty accurate to like the, the insta-kill like ability shooter. I think the state of the game now is like the most Overwatch Overwatch has ever been. And what I mean is it's like, Shooter stuff's really strong. The heroes are really strong. Uh, when we've had a chance to like ask the devs this, this is a the question I keep trying to tease out of them. Like, what's your vision for the game? Is is competitively speaking? And Jeff in the lightning round a year ago told me that uh, like over the top abilities and like diversity of strategies and characters. And I'm paraphrasing a bit here, but like, so when I see what we have now, like multiple comps at a high level like the abilities are wacky like things resolve the the, yeah, the dps are popping off so, say what immortality field are real wacky well okay <laughs> yeah I mean, there's always going to be one of that. those there's always <laughs> going to be one of those <laughs> I, I love all the diversity and heroes and abilities just to have everything they do be countered by one single fucking ability sorry continue <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm I sort of losing know. my own train of thought anyway, so probably interrupting me is good at this point. But uh, the, the thing I'm, I'm, I was just trying to close with, I guess, I like, yeah, I lost the plot completely. I don't remember. It's, whoever was paying attention to what I was saying, but, uh, redirect the conversation. Well, you were uh, saying I, the Overwatch I, I, is in the most Overwatch round. state it's been. Yeah, and Lightning Round. Yeah, and then they're already they're already I, putting I, in all the Overwatch Two stuff now, like it's already there in the gameplay yeah, side. Yeah, and and 
it's weird. It puts me in a weird place because I actually enjoy the game the most now. So I feel like I've been getting a lot of the things I want. And then maybe this new feature and stuff is up the alley of uh, uh, regular players. But I don't think any of this brings the mainstream player base back. So at some point we might even just be like kind of wasting our time being upset about this and just need the new game to come out because oh, like free to play would bring more players back. But really what we need is that new game because even if they come back, it's like, we well, have man. a more challenging esports friendly game now. Like the pro game is better, but the average player who own like again, like Brig players, Orisa players, uh, Moira, whatever. Like there's a lot of players that need these heroes to be overtuned to have any fun with the game because that's like a big section of the audience, and that works if it's a PVE game, but it doesn't really work when it's been a, a, a you know only a PVP game before. So I'm a little torn on this. Like it's it's hard for me to. I wish, that, but. I wish the balance team had the talent to have a fair skill to reward curve and how they balance the game to ensure that those players can still play those heroes, get into Overwatch and love it without breaking high level play. Unfortunately, they don't. They've proven time and time again that they don't. Well, I think it's it's. I think you don't give them enough credit for what it is now compared to the previous metas. Like, every time I, I play I, the game, I see an immortality field block every hero I do, every crazy play I make, and it's literally the reason I'm not playing the game now. So I disagree. I mean, your title of opinion, I think they've done a good job making Rush meta. But there's always that one stupid fucking thing, and it's always in the support category. I mean, the, I, I can problem. personally speaking, I can or I've learned to live with Lamp. I I also agree with Frito that it it feels like ten times more fun. And again, we also have to try and remember that it's not all about the master GM Baps who are using the Lamp smartly. The majority the of Baps are. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing. Like the majority of like in the I think the difference now be between before is before even at Plat. You just exist as, for example, Arisa, and that's fine. But now, so, oh, sorry, sorry, just to finish the point, that'll let you go, Flats. But now I think, at least with BAP, yeah, immortality is stupid. I hate it. Please, I'm a tank player. I hate it. But nine out of ten times, I'm just seeing BAPs in plat use it to save themselves because they fucked up in positioning. So it's not even like, it's not obnoxiously dominating the game the way I think previous metas do. So I do think they do deserve credit for bringing it to a better level. They'll never really... I don't think anyone can really perfect it. I think there's always going to be like an outlier that sticks out like a sore thumb that's like, well, this is just dumb. Why don't we change it? But it I do think we've gotten closer. You could lower the skill ceiling of it by changing it to a re re damage reduction field. And then high level play would be able to reuse it in the beginning of an early engage. And then the in the lower, lower ranks, like they wouldn't... They would just use it on themselves, like you said. But like... It wouldn't be immortal. It would just, you know what I mean. Like they'd be using it, like, like it wouldn't be as impactful. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it's, a, it's a, I hundred percent agree. Lower skill ceiling, lower skill ceiling, but higher skill floor. Does that make sense? Like, like you, yeah. you don't have to worry about saving it for the right moment. You can be like, okay, or beginning of this fight, Ryan's are brawling. You know. Fuck it. Anyway. I think uh, the only the point I want to make, though, is that it's very easy for us to lose perspective on other metas and other things and, and to, like, remember how we felt at the past or what what even the numbers were. And I think going back to look at, like, someone try to counter goats with a non-goats comp or, or double shield and its other varieties where the shields literally last forever. Like, there's just so many more things that require execution now that... Like, bap, BAP aside, like, I mean, I've literally wrote the devs' essays on why I think LAMP is a bad thing, okay? So <laughs> I agree with you that I don't like it, but it's it's like, to some at some point, we have to accept that the game is going to have wacky BS in it, if, yeah, to I'm some okay degree. With the, I'm and okay with wacky BS, I just want it to not be bullshit. Well, yes. I, 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 oh, what's I, BS, Sam? What's BS? Yeah, yeah, yeah fortress of words. Touche. Continue, sorry. <laughs> I think also as well, uh, the, it does go into how they want to balance Overwatch 2, which is to say supports are going to feel like they don't easily die, which is something they've really tried to design into Overwatch 1, but with like role passives, it's something that they're just blatantly, like all supports self-heal, right? Whereas I feel Brig was designed to stop a Plat Zenyatta from getting destroyed by Tracer all game long, which is what it was like for 2017 for some people. Um, so I think when I speak about like the state of the game now, I'm more so looking at like the whole ecosystem and not just what gets exploited in rank. And also as well, uh, I think a big problem with BAP and ranked is that it's just the easiest style to play. Like other styles are getting played at, at, at high tiers. It just requires more coordination. And, and so to some degree, I always come back to like, I think this game just sucks for solo queue. It's like 
the worst ranked experience I've ever had. So Bring like, so sex. I hear what you're saying, but then like I filter into uh, like if 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 we could play as a team and emulate like a Brig Zen comp against it, like so, some of the pros are doing right now. And now uh, I just think that's too hard to play with random people who you know that you get. You must. It's just so much easier to play map. And that's like a, just a reality of Overwatch competitive uh, queue that there's always that oppressive nature of it. And I think you lose some of the fun factor of the diversity, which is why me and SVP has wanted hero bands for like four years or whatever it's been, right? That's the reason why we usually like, well, yeah, we'll mix it up. Like, so you can't just do the easiest thing every time forehead. And the, the, the devs are over here. I feel sometimes they're like, well, if you just like learned to optimize the, this other strategy, you could do it. So there's always that conflict there that uh, is in play um, because uh, well, other strategies are working at the pro level uh but it, it and, and they can teach us it's just too hard to execute with randoms my squad in warzone but i can't play as a team at the highest level of play in overwatch in a team-based game well this brings me so, this brings us nicely to the topic i think frida sorry if you got anything else to add then go well, ahead well yeah i mean i originally kind of opened it up with it i think i think uh my guess for the features and systems is a clan system which is like the final frontier of uh uh lfg and all those other things like we forget those even exist lfg and endorsements and and whatever but uh they originally set out with those as like th what they explained it as was a crawl walk run approach where they begin doing it try this out see how that works and build up and they've talked about clans for a long time i think it's probably clans and i wouldn't be surprised if we got a a, a tournament mode as well because it coincides with the marketing of overwatch league which has these tournaments they have a skin like it just seems like that's my best guess. If everyone, like, they normally do not say big things are coming. Eric Keller comes in this interview and says, in fact, the biggest possible thing. I'm not misquoting. He said, as big as anything we've ever done, we are adding to the game. So, so whoever's smarter than me, feel free to tell me what the heck that is. Roll Q2.0? Like, what, what could yeah. it be? I wanted to ask you what? actually that, Frito. Go ahead, Vlad. Oh, I was going to say. Let's say it is clans, okay? And clans is some better version of LFG, you know? I feel like L and this is kind of maybe a little harsh. I feel like LFG was so bad that it wasn't even crawling. It was nailed to the ground from the start. Like it didn't even move. Like it was just dead. Like you know what's funny, like, Flats? When I said this on day one, I got so much shit from the community. They're like, "Well, you just hate everything they give you." It's like, "Well, no, I'm just I can I can look past the day. You know, I there. wasn't just I've born yesterday." Wait a minute, I, you I, guys don't want to join Uwu Daddy LFG 18 plus? The only <laughs> shit I can <laughs> trash. The reason is there's no reward to group in this game. Yes. In fact, the game, yeah. sabot so the game sabotages grouping. The game actually sabotages grouping. Yep, it does. It's a T. It's the only team-based game I've ever seen to punish you for playing as a group, which is the best way to enjoy gaming and multiplayer in this day and age. Filling in any game fucking sucks. Why yep. can I not play with my friends at the highest level of play? Why? Yep. Yep. So or even any play. Forget about the highest level at any rank. Like Frito and I notice as hard stuck masters. We get shafted for three stacking in masters. We get shafted for four stacking in masters because the matchmakers like screw you. Take the hardest Smurf games. Take the biggest inters. And like the whole system is designed that if you're in a stack, the game should be harder. Th and this now is you've also got possibly sorry. I yeah, go ahead. Were... Sorry. No, no, you go. You go. I mean, the, 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 yeah, I've ranted about this for a little. I don't want to go too far into it, but yeah. Uh, part of the reason why I'm enjoying the game a bit more and it, and in the all of this is because I I have let my I think the best it sucks that I have to like give an advanced guide on how to enjoy the game and not drive yourself crazy but the best way to do it is to lower your SR enough so that you can fairly stack when I say fairly stack I mean it's you have a a decent experience with your friends uh even though every time you go we any of us go to solo queue in our little group with svb and whatever the games are so hilariously easy hilariously easy and, th and then what we need to do is lose like 500 sr so the matchmaker penalty isn't as rough and then we can have fun so i've been experiencing the game like that so i might be a bit biased like like and i think it's uh useful for creators to try to figure out how to do this for yourself it sucks for you guys who are like top 500 players so because yeah. that's like that's where you need to be playing but uh to play I quick like play if you play quick play and like what I'm describing, it's like the game's great. It's like the the, the balance is, is good. There's lots of different things we can run. 
Uh, a lot of heroes are, are good that used to be trash. Like, it's hard to see all this stuff when you're in solo queue hell of, of yep. like, trying to play at the top, which I just don't even think the, the system functions properly to execute that. Whereas other games like Valorant, and this is a big thing for me, uh, where the the devs seem to our our devs seem to get offended when we say like well you know you've clearly kind of abandoned Overwatch one no, no we haven't we we added a free for all map what do you mean <laughs> like listen the ranked system has only got worse over time and meanwhile Valorant yeah. is like coming out with Valorant's system is so complicated I it would take me too long to explain it there's like different mm -hmm. ways for it to reset and it tracks your highest point here and then it does this and there, you have a number and there's a leaderboard there's a thing and there's a that and there's a there's all sorts of things for you to play for whereas we like you know we have top 500 and and that's it and like there's hardly any players top by the way uh top 500 combined like as in uh, all three roles is like in diamond or something like I I'm top 200 at the lowest SR I've been in years uh, on all three rolls. I'm top 200 Damn. at low masters on all three rolls. That's like a perspective check for you for like how few people play all three rolls or put the time in or, or, or the, like that wasn't always that way. And that, I'm not, that's not like a, a great judge of things because people often only play one role, but it's just sort of interesting with the, the, the scale of the community we're talking about that we have. Anyway, I said a lot of stuff, so I will cede the floor now. <laughs> top 500. Yeah. Top 500 uh, PS4 uh, Asia is three people, by the way. Just as an FYI, I've been there. <laughs> when I, when I played on PS4, it was great. It was three people. You couldn't make a team of top 500. It wasn't possible. <laughs> Let's make 497 old accounts. Wait, wait, which, uh, I was, there's a point I forgot to mention, which is like, I think it's going to be clans, but it's like the worst possible time to add it. <laughs> I don't, I don't <laughs> like, think it's going to be, I think it's, it's going to be something gonna, bigger. Can we, can we I don't, what could it be though? Have, yeah, sorry, I sorry. So clue. let's, so let's, let, let's move this on now because we're kind of alluding to the game and the gameplay itself. I know oh, yeah. Nathan, Nathan was supposed to be here and, and shout out to him, whatever, he's on his flight. I hope it's going well, buddy. I'm sure he really wants us to bring up that he thinks that the game will, will be better if we go open queue, basically. And something has been fundamentally lost when we switch to 2 to 2 and it's time to go back. Samito, I know you're also a proponent of this, so I'll let you take it first. I don't think that Overwatch can compete with the queue, the current queue times of 2 to 2 And I want the game to feel open. And I think that while Roll Queue has solved a lot of things, I think there might be a way to take the game back a little bit towards open queue, at least. Maybe not the full way, but I definitely think the conversation needs to be opened up as to whether or not we can compete with the queue times of other games when Overwatch 2 comes out to make sure the game maintains its top spot or one oh. of its top spots as a competitor. Well, I, first off, I totally disagree, um, just, just to start. But um, actually, recently, and I can, I can tell by the system, is uh, they've changed the way the matchmaker works in the past two months or so. They fight harder to get you a more balanced game um if you are in a duo queue uh if you are solo queue in gm plus it will give you whatever that's how you get the top 100 tank players in a 3800 lobby before i got on today i got back from the dealership got an oil change i was gonna play uh i messaged him wanted to play i opened up his stream see where he's at he was on havana in a 3800 game he was top 100 he was the only you know what i mean it was one they had one top 100 he, on tank he was the other top 100 on the other time other team and that's it when we play though 10 minute minimum queue 10 minute minimum and by the way those queues were like two minutes 10 minutes minimum every single time and they're at least 40 high 41s to low 42 average games during oh, throughout the whole day and i think they did that because people like myself and a lot of others we're complaining that the SR differentials were way too goddamn high because I shouldn't get in a game with someone who's 3,600 if I'm 4,400 plus. Yeah. That's just not fair. And I think they finally said that's true. Now, the problem with that is it's made skew times skyrocket. Now, I think that is mostly a two part problem. One, we're in the top 1.1% of the game. Two, the player base has shrunken dram dramatically. Yeah. I was, you know, before we started, I was asking Sam, how many people do you see nowadays in your games that you recognize now? Like, like I recognize a good amount, but there's a lot of them. Like, I just, I'm like, I don't even know. Like half the people that I used to play with are just gone. Like, you know, and whether they made a new account or they just quit playing the game. Like you'll see it occasionally a name. It's like, Oh, I remember that guy. Like he used to play a bunch like eight months ago. I haven't seen him since, you know? 
and those they just don't play the game anymore and and i think that's mostly due to the game declining in its current state of you know even though the balance has improved and i totally agree i think the most recent tank patch was a little sauce but hey well that's for a different day um well you don't like your diva nuking a brig with one mech call it's better than fucking doomfist all how do you feel about that (laughs) <laughs> I I uninstalled the game and I'm not playing it for the first time in years. There, I literally, there, I literally have why, quit the game. Um, why but, don't you like open queue flats? Because you said at the start you're just like flat out against it. Because well, two parts. One, open queue created the meta that broke the game, goats. Um, it it, it was actually the worst meta ever for the health of the game. I had a ton of fun. I got to play main tank and fucking run around, you know, build ult in two seconds. DPS players didn't get to play, have fun though. They had to either play Zarya or Brig, and you know, just the whole the whole role was dead. Since then, we've actually had a lot of time to rebalance the game towards two two two, and I think that's where the point here comes in. Or Freedom Native, the game feels a lot better now. Like the problem is, it's just there's nothing to do. Like it's the same thing day in and day out. Balance wise, it feels pretty good, except for some. No, some problems here and there. You like being better at Infest. Yeah, you see, you know what I'm talking about. But like, you know, you can play Rush on some maps. You can play Double Shield on some maps. You can play Dive on some some maps with the Ana Brig. You can play like I've seen the dumb comps come back of Hogzaria. I had a game I won the other day with Hogzaria on King's Row. I don't, I don't ever want to talk about that game ever again. But you know, <laughs> like it just, it just, it, it was just insane. You know, and 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 it was it fun for me? Not really. But that's also because, you know, I have in my mind what Overwatch is. You go back to Open Queue, which, by the way, speaking of which, if you've never queued Open Queue, you should queue Open Queue, play 10 games, play 10 games, place your account, and then stack with people, like stack with the other, like, you know, people you're friends with, and let's go play. Because that's That's what what I was about doing some stuff like that. Yeah, that's that's what me, Emong, Matman, and Car Queue all did one day. We all, we just stacked Open Queue. It was so much fun. We lost every game because Matman played Doomfist and just sent it into their team every single <laughs> fight. And that's where my point comes in because you got Matmans who think that they know how to play Doomfist because he got a few kills in Diamond one time yeah, and sends it into the other team because he doesn't want to play ball or doesn't want to play Ryan or whatever it is because he doesn't think the comp is right. And that's where the open queue problem comes back. You know those games? And, 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 and I, played a few, I played a few of them where you load in and you get Sombra, Tracer, uh, Soldier, Pharah, um, uh, Reaper, Kree. And then everyone's just like, hmm. I'll play on it, maybe. Hmm. Nah, I won't. I'm going to go. And one it, person it's, it's like the Thrower Thro- watch video. Do you remember that video? Oh, the I don't know. watch course. animation, the greatest of, of all time. Yeah. And, and one person goes, on, uh, waits and spawn. Nobody swaps. They, they go Bastion. I'll self heal on my own and go on the flank. Easy clap, you know? Overpowered. <laughs> and just... You know, that, we're right. We're right back there I, again. I, I agree. That's a shit show. Um, so for one, the first thing I want to ask you or, or mention is open Q creating goats. Open Q didn't create goats. The incompetence of the balance team did. Um, Brig, Fair. if it would not have happened if Brig was not in the game, she was the most overpowered character ever put in a video game. So. I, I don't think it's fair to say open Q created goats when reality poor game balance creates comps like that and you need to have an upper echelon team that truly has a major fundamental understanding of what to do to keep the game balanced in which case the blizzard team was not this mm-hmm. is not if and or buts i'm sorry tough shit you guys didn't oh, do I, a I good job so as for the role swapping thing um, I agree. I don't think that if we were going to go back to open queue, it would be the same as it traditionally was. It would need to be improved, and I think it would need to be – if this happens, which the feasibility of it happening I think is the biggest blockade to it. We can all sit here and say, well, this would be a good thing if we did X, Z, X Y, and Z, but the reality is Blizzard never will. Tough shit. But I just mm-hmm. want to open the – pop the question and just you know ponder the idea. Um, but if we could find some kind of medium – the same, similar to how Dota does it too, where you could prefer QA role, but still swap to anything that you need, right? I miss being able to swap off Doomfist to Ana if I felt like we were struggling in the support category, right? Mm-hmm. I, I miss being able to do that. And that open feeling of Overwatch on top of the fact that it would lower Q times drastically to the point where you're still to get in a game once every minute when, because the reality is people don't want to wait. Like a, a lot of my friends I've talked to 
have said that they don't want to go and queue 10 minutes for DPS. They don't want to go wait five minutes for a match when I can hop into a Dota game. I can hop into a Warzone game. I can hop into Apex mm -hmm. Legends. I can hop into anything and it can take a minute. Like that is where our competition has risen to. Yep. And you are also spot on about the game balance. Like I know, like we have balanced the game fairly well for 2-2-2. <laughs> it mm -hmm. took time. They couldn't figure out double shield. That's they couldn't <laughs> figure out pretty much anything. Tough shit. You know, I wish we could get to the game to a point where open queue could work. I wonder if it's possible for an open queue squad to queue up against a roll queue squad, similar to how Dota does it, apparently. I don't know how that would work. Mm. I just pop in the question there. But I I think for over I think for Overwatch to reach its peak potential as a game. We need a format of open queue and an honor system within the community where the community is empowered to report a player. And if X amount of people vote Denlo out for flanking his Moira the whole game, right? Then, or Nolan flanking his Moira the whole game, then it, the system's like, all right, what the fuck's going on here? And you're canned. Get the fuck, go play quick play, right? The unfortunate reality is Blizzard will never do that. For one, they don't trust they don't trust us with hero bands, which I honestly am not sure how I feel about hero bands, but you know, they wouldn't trust us with hero bands. They did hero pools. They, you know, like they they can't balance the damn game. They've proven that for years, and it took the crux of two 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 to for them to figure mm -hmm. out a year later how to balance the fucking game. Right. I'm sorry, that's a harsh reality. We had Orissa and Sigma dominating the game for a year when all of us knew how to patch that out in a week. These people don't understand PvP, right? So you need empower your community, spot on Raven Studio sharp game balance consistently, and ultimately like a community who's willing to make that switch back after hard committing. And I think that that's very hard to do. In fact, I wouldn't say it's worth the time right now with the current staff over there because i don't have faith in them to balance the game properly to do it but i think the ideal situation to make overwatch a top tier game and make it the best is is an atmosphere where roll queue is not or, where where maybe you could queue open queue against roll queue i don't know i truly don't know but the the the, the part of the game that makes you feel free with endless opportunity that's what we need and the game is undeniably dumbed down mm -hmm. but I remember having this talk with Frito two years ago where I think Roll Q did serve its purpose, but two years later, is it what we need? I'd say know. I'd say the highs of of Open Q were better than the highs of two two two, but the lows yeah. were lower. We're basically. way yeah. lower. Yeah. If the lows we could are find lower. a way to moderate those lows better, we would have the game that we all love. Unfortunately, Blizzard never cracked down on ranked hard enough to make that happen. And on top of poor game balance, we needed the crutch. And yeah. that falls on Jeff too, in my opinion. By the way. I was going to say, to the counterpoint then, would you really want to go back and undo how far we've gotten with game balance? And like, now we're actually like, you know, like, hey, we got, we got, we gotten far to then go back and undo it. And then yeah, it's, just, it's, it's and, and try it open and, and, and to go one step further, um, you got, you know, with the current 222 system, you have three different sets of SR. I mean, I know myself, I'm not a 4,500 DPS player. In, in no world am I a 4,500 DPS player. Like, I'm just well, not. You're doing this nasty, man, man. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> but if I queue up, you know, open queue, and, and it's not me. Like, we're just saying, like, hypothetical me. Yeah, yeah. Queues yeah. up open queue and wants to play some Doomfist. Those games are gonna are, are are pretty bad at that point, you know. And it's like you can have the same argument already of like, oh, what if, if if they queue up in the first time? But their SR will eventually go down, and then it will rebalance them at some point. Yeah, it sucks for a while, especially if you figure out that so and so is queuing off roll, and they are just awful at it, and you're just stuck with them for the next couple of weeks until they drop. But in the reverse system of open queue, I can just if I want to int my brains out on Ash until from 45 to 4100 and then the next day pop some g fuel and kick it back up into high gear on main tank and go right back up and then next week just you know you know what i mean at that that's, point well, you're playing a the, dangerous that's where game the community-based report system and honor code system would kick in i think and i think 
and I, I and, and I hear you, but I I there is literally negative. I mean, I, 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 I agree. Happening. I agree. I don't think it's feasible. I, I I think it's too hard to make happen. Yeah. I wish it could happen. A part of me longs for that to happen. Mm-hmm. But I just. What do you do about targeting at that point? Like people that target players just because they don't like them, even though like they didn't do anything wrong, you know? Like I highly doubt that would happen, especially like it's. You think so? Even, even if it did, why don't we have an agent system that could review it? That's. I mean, that's true, but that's. But again, it's just more work for Blizzard that they've proven yep. over the last exactly. four years they can't do. So the other thing, like Kefri's, Kefri's gotten banned during two of his twenty-four hour streams recently. Like, you know, the other thing. Oh, yeah, he, he, Sorry, sorry to interrupt. The other thing I want to add to oh, this, you're and good, you're I good. think I want to, I think Frida will come into this well. Is this also just alludes to the impotency of the rank system as is? Because you know, you you gave the example flats of like, well, I could just int on Ash and drop 400 SR and then go back to Reinhardt and climb. You can mm-hmm. kind of already do that if you just int on Wrecking Ball and you know, let's say <laughs> yeah. you're, you're a bad Wrecking Ball player. You I've seen on your ball flats. You suck. Not flats not the particularly. I mean, <laughs> I mean, a player. I mean, a player, right? Like you can, <laughs> within the role, there's so much variance too that it feels a, a lot right now that the SR system doesn't, it doesn't really good job calculating SR as as it is because meta shifts so, so re- rapidly, hero power fluctuates and then, you know, people climb and stay places where they shouldn't be. And that's where I want to bring Frito in, which is, because I know this is an area he's interested in how to fix that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm surprised this hasn't uh, been brought up as a, as an argument. So, um, although I like this point, it, we uh, I think I think uh, it's it's not as strong as if we were able to counter uh, the point. Um, anyway, uh, part of the problem for for people not liking roll queue is that the off roll uh, SR is usually off and really badly, as as sort of flat said. And I yeah, we also we didn't NMR reset. Before. Yeah, yeah, it, that was may- that was dumb. It really makes it. Do- Blizzard does not give me an easy job to defend any decision they ever make because they never <laughs> seem to like fully commit to the thing. It's like, oh, we get LFG, but there's never a reason to use it. Well, I saw that coming. I wanted LFG, but I also wanted a reason to use it. So, it, like the Roll SR system problem is also a thing I've been thinking about a lot. And um, it, uh, again, I just come back to like Valorant, which has just some so many more complicated systems in order to handle this or hand or respect the fact that they cause other problems like so on one hand we like the balance in some ways i kind of wanted to speak a little more on that but i'll table that for a second but we like the balance but because they change things pretty rapidly all of a sudden different heroes like see vast uh uh improve in, in performance boosts uh i remember when hanzo got his tank eraser buff uh, I saw a lot of players. <laughs> the fire rate on, on Storm Arrow, uh, uh, when, when that went up, uh, a lot of players got, like, I've seen profiles, like, physical evidence of a player, like, hmm, why is this player here in this MMR now? Look at the profile. Oh, they were minus 500 SR until this buff and started playing Hanzo. So, like, they're, they're like there's so many instances of that where the, the chaos we add to the system does more to influence ranked than the normal player skill level does because of, of how the game just works basically where if you if you play a better hero you can have a, a, a better result now luckily that somehow was worse in like like again we just we forget moth meta no one even mentioned it to now right and we talk about how briggs over moth you did less than brig okay like brig took some mechanics moth, moth was so much worse than brig i think but anyway it's not a competition but my point is like there, there's so many inherent like i, I she res three things sam yeah that, yeah, in, yeah. Res, <laughs> res instantly back to life like like okay like go goats was a problem but like it, there was anyway sorry i'm like i'm i'm hey, tangenting ahead, myself yeah. i don't even know who i'm arguing with anymore it's getting late uh, i'm getting tired but like the, the 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 whole sr system to me needs to be be rethought and redone and revamped and like upgraded in so many different ways uh i, I lost the plot with this sv I'm, I'm not gonna lie i was kind of enjoying these guys well, the podcast and uh and and, and getting <laughs> Just following along, uh, but I know like, you've had thoughts about just like you know, just dismantle SR, like let there be like a quick play SR, like a hero SR. Yeah, I don't, I don't even think that a uh, flex Q works for Overwatch fundamentally. So I just sort of stand on like a different island, I suppose. Which no, I might agree. Be an, might be an, an equally unreasonable island. It's a, you know, Sam and Nate are over here in Open Q land. Uh, and I, I want to. Uh, yeah, I don't know I how much more time I'm not we have. In but... Open Q land, I missed the peak. <laughs> Uh, open I well, just don't think we're capable of getting there. 
in, in any case, I, I think the game just doesn't really function in so many ways with random players. Like it's not, and, and we're, we're trying to make the game compete uh, up against the likes of the Call of Duties and the Fortnites and whatever. And I just don't ever think beyond quick play, Overwatch is capable of that. I, so we actually, might, I, I, Yeah, I think you're kind of right. I think maybe quick play does have that basis covered. I think maybe I'm being a little small sided there thinking that it needs to be competitive in that regard. Because the quick play experience has gotten so much better. I think maybe that quick play. Partially thanks to roll queue and also no, no, priority pass. Completely pass, to roll queue. Completely I, to roll queue. You're right. I think if the off roll SR problem was better, we the higher level community wouldn't disregard priority pass. I think you guys think it's just a big steaming pile. But for quick play players, it's like great. And mm -hmm. not only is it great, the quick play queue times aren't that bad either. So it, it, like it, there's a combination of things which I'm trying to like it. It makes me scratch my head a little bit. Like, I don't know if the player base in quick play has just maintained or if over time when enough ranked players or community members or whatever keep saying quick plays better. Like, I, I feel like I've tanked a little bit. Like, I've contributed to some percentage of ranked queue time decay where people are like, you know what, SVB and Frito, you're right. Quick play is better. I'll just stop <laughs> playing ranked. And and like, yeah. we're losing players to that. And, and they're realizing that, that that's the maybe, best way to play the Maybe the, the game. team queue will solve that problem, too. Well, this well. is kind of what I mean, where I'm like, I feel like if we had a clash mode, which I think is they basically have said is coming like they've said they've said many times. Eventually, I'm much, really curious how that'll play out. I'm uh, I'm yeah, very curious mode? it's too little yeah. too late yeah, to me. It, it, yeah. it, it's it's way too late. They've to already lost do anything. Yeah. But 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 like, you know, if if uh, if you could have a separate thing, an event that you and friends could play, then you're like. We're actually playing the game. This is, this is the problem I've always had. We always come down to whether it's open queue, roll queue, whatever. It it feels like you're not really playing ranked over or competitive Overwatch. It feels like you're playing the ranked s s social experiment. You're playing the ladder. Like, you're playing the ladder. <laughs> right, not like the, the ladder. And, <sighs> and it's so True. unlike other experiences. It's so like people have problems with your randoms and apex, but it's so much different. It's so it's so much different than like it's hard for me to describe and the best way I, I can go to describe it is I always go back to getting VOD reviews of, and I think SV might be more acquainted to this as well. Like seeing the thought process of a player who's either in open queue or even now who only knows how to play behind a Reinhardt and they either in open queue don't have a tank and then th they're just never going to play this game ever again. Like basically it's like, Oh, I don't have a tank now. I don't, they don't have no idea how to position. It's a whole nother uh, frame of mind. Or now in, in two, 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 there's a lot of like ball hog and, and, and they have no idea what to do as well. Like, like they, they are, their positioning is just throwing. They don't understand the concepts of how they play these different comps. And it, it might not even be bad. Like both players might have a, correct ish idea if they could sync together on the same strategy but just because they're choosing not to for whatever reason they can't function right like like i have this problem as well where sometimes because i know how high level players play i try to get my team to do that and if they if it doesn't clash then it's just like i might as well just not even say anything it just, it just lean into how they want to play and and so much of ranked in overwatch is like that as opposed to other games like valorant or whatever where you can you're not so dependent on being in lockstep with your team and and I, no matter what they do to the game, even if it's at its best possible balance, I never think that's going to go away, ever. It's always going to play like that. They're trying to fix it with, like, 2CP, uh, complicated mode. Let's just get rid of that. Too complicated. You, you, like, plat players don't regroup, Sam. They they can't they can't oh, get oh, to be. They can't free, touch free, the free, point free, ever. Frito, Frito, you've For seen my unranked minutes, GM. They can't get Anubis, my, out of Anubis B spawn. It, my that's win a rate horrible plat, experience. My win rate in plat is 20% lower than my win rate in diamond to masters. <laughs> I, that, that's not a cap. Yeah, that's not a cap, especially on tank. <laughs> this is the larger philosophical question. Is like, Can we get the game at the average level to resemble anything like the pro level? And I guess the answer no. Frito's saying is no, but... Is, it, like, is two, is, yeah, well, ahead, I, I think two, two, two helped a bit with that, and I and mm -hmm. I don't necessarily mean pro level. Like I think that that puts people off when you say pro level. I just mean like the dream of what you think competitive Overwatch is, right? Which is like I, I'm a healer, I heal my tank, let's go in together. Like that's what you think it should be for most people, right? And 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 as soon as it's like not those things, and it's a different rule set like open queue or whatever, a lot of people just check out. Like more people check out than check in. I would say like like the people who actually want to like the game. The the I think the players that enjoy the open queue chaos and will play six DPS every game and love it 
already left for other games long long time ago. I don't think we're ever going to keep that that. Oh audience. yeah, I, I, yep. I, I think it's better for us to try to like you know be the next Dota as opposed to being the next Fortnite. Yeah, true. Essentially, is, is what I think, and I, I think we're kind of going down that path. And why I like this meta, and why I like where the balance is going, and I like two to two, and I like priority pass. I like a lot of these things because I think the over the core Overwatch skill sets. There's things we can complain about. Not a huge fan of Lamp, but largely it's about like big impact abilities right and like dps matters supports matter tank mat like that it's been so rare that that's ever been the case where all three roles have big plays to make like it's it's it's, it's yeah, usually it's like true. a couple heroes just being ridiculous and and now like so many things are viable and you have to execute it like this is best case scenario but yet nobody's playing the game. I, the I think time, when people, so. I think when people come back and play the game, my biggest qualm is the queue times. That's what I'm most concerned about. And I think when everyone comes back and play the game, if there is that group queue and it solves that problem, um, it's 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 good. I actually do have to bounce, guys. Thank you so much yeah. for having me, though. Um, and Nate's gonna be so disappointed in me, but I think the more I think about it, the more I hear <laughs> like kind of what you guys say, the more I agree. I think it's just it's too much. Uh, look at this little. Right over there. Well, this right, is the point of the debate, right? We convinced someone, but yeah. Yeah, you did. There. You got, you got, wow, my stubborn ego went back. Who would have guessed? All right, guys. Uh, chat, thank you guys so much. You guys are all dog shit at the game, and I'll see you guys later. Much love. <laughs> <Peace> <laughs> I'll see y'all. Thank you. So, right, so. This is going to mess up the overlays a bit, so I'm just going to quickly head to concluding thoughts, anyways, because I know it's getting late. I mean, it's late for me. It's 3 a.m., but I know it's getting late for you guys. We're, we're all tired a little bit, but I just want to get to concluding thoughts then. We kind of. We're saying we, you know, maybe there's a clan system coming. Maybe there's, um, you know, Flats thinks there might be some big hero changes. What do we want to see in the next? Because we know Overwatch, Overwatch 2 isn't coming out 2021, right? We know that's not coming. But what do we want to see from Overwatch in the immediate aftermath? With this being the great Jeff debate, in the immediate aftermath of Jeff leaving, in this calendar year, what do we want to see from Overwatch? Mm, this calendar year. Hmm. Platz, you can go first if you have anything. Uh, I have some okay. thoughts, but... First, I'll give my sarcastic answer. Anything. <laughs> Something. Uh, so much my better real... than what I was, was going to say. Go ahead. <laughs> my, my real answer of what I want to see... Life. Care. S like, something that is self-aware of what is happening not only to the game... But to its creators, to its esports, we are kind of hurting a little. And if it was all about the money, if it was all about the subs, it was be all about the likes. Just go play Warzone, Apex, etc. All, all you could go down four or five rows, and those guys still got 10k subs each. What over what? What over our streamers got 10k subs right now? None, zero. We are here because we love this goddamn game i don't care what it is i do care but 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 i want to see something that either is going to rock the foundation of the game in a way that makes us go hey we're gonna pop off and you guys we're all in this together or at least somehow in some way reaching out and being like hey we have a, we have all appreciate all of you it's been five long years we're ready to take the next steps into this we want to work together. We want to pop off. We want everybody to win together. Because like I said, there's four different groups of people. The player base, the content creators, the Overwatch League, or the eSport, and the devs. And we all need each other to work well. And if everybody's thriving, then everybody wins. But if someone's lacking, or if multiple are lacking, everyone's going to start to, to, to lose and fail. And it, we're we're hitting the junction. We're hitting critical mass of the time, and we all talk about it. Overwatch two, Overwatch two, Overwatch two. Overwatch two goes free to play, which you can't go free to play now. You go free to play right now. It, there's no content. Where people are gonna come pick up the game, realize there's no content after two weeks, and leave. There has to be new content, which Overwatch two has, brings in the free to play model. Overwatch two, the e PVE, the massive PVP changes, all of it at once. But even though we're all confident that that will happen and that it will pop. I want some semblance of life to feel I'm appreciated, to feel like other creators. It doesn't even have to be me. Honestly, I don't give a shit. Don't even talk to me. I'm kind of annoying sometimes. But somebody, someone, pick someone 
and grab them and just go boom and have them have a small torch and a small light that they can hold up to the rest of the community that's in the dark and be like, hey, come here, come to this location. Things are going to look up. Come here, we rally together. Something, please. That's all I'm asking. I don't care what it is. But show us some light. Oh, Amen. I need the light right now. I didn't pay my electricity bill. <laughs> I'm stuck over here in the dark. In the dark. Look at what you did, Overwatch. Jeff. This poor man can't afford electricity in his household. <laughs> this poor content creator is going without lights. But go ahead, Rito. Uh, yeah, to, to serious up the talk a bit. Uh, I think realistically, like I, I don't think there's a thing they can do to bring a lot of players back right now uh, before Overwatch 2, so it kind of just doesn't matter. Uh, but because it doesn't matter, go crazy with it a little bit. Like, like uh, you know, I, I want to see a ranked overhaul. Like, like, it, it, like the, the more experimental stuff that would be more damaging to try out when the, there's all the casuals here, do it now when it's, you know, me and Flats <laughs> on the ladder alone, you know, like, like uh, yeah. Uh, there's so few players, you might as well do a ranked overhaul where it's going to have the least uh, uh, damaging effects or or whatever it is that you think is is a useful experience to like guinea pig us a bit while uh, we're getting ready. And I, I anticipate, because Aaron was like, all right, systems and features, all the dev teams just about coordinated for these new systems and features wink wink nudge nudge i'm like i'm scratching my head what what is that and i'm hoping that that is the the route they go to be fair mm -hmm. to them i feel like they do a great job at like 30 percent of what they need to do like every step of the way we could like it's easy for us to like miss and i feel like i'm always trying to bring sam back off the ledge and like well you know we had moth like we had we had it was worse but you just forget now right and it's like but but it's because they always you know they they do roll queue and then they do priority pass like 10 years later which they needed immediately oh and then the, the off roll sr now is the new thing and it's like it always feels like they're playing catch up to their own decisions and and they just get outpaced and that's been happening for so long that now the other games out there are like lapping us and like <laughs> going around yeah. the bend and, and taunting on the <laughs> to the finish line. Like, oh, we, not only do we have free to play, like we've got we have all these other systems and all these every other thing that you could dream of. So uh, I look forward to, to Overwatch stepping into that, like making a strong, confident step. I think there's a lot of evidence that they're already doing that. So I, I'm I'm perhaps haven't been able to vocalize it in the in the call here that much but I, i'm fairly optimistic still despite being bitter and grumpy and and everything um i think the the problem with overwatch always is like it's such a complicated game that their little steps forward it's hard it's hard for them to have enough data to like make the next five step forward that they need so it took us years to get to this point with 222 balance which when they first put it in, we were like optimistic, like, oh yeah, they can just balance the game for two, two, two. And we didn't think it was going to take two years, right? That's not really acceptable, right? Like we mm -hmm. all know that this meta is better than double shield, right? As much as we don't like lamp or whatever, we it's shooting shields is so much worse. Like Sigma being mm -hmm. a character about his damage as opposed to his, I exist and play keep away. Like, no one likes that. No one prefers that really. But we have so few players, I feel like, that th this momentum, that the good momentum they have isn't getting appreciated in the community. And we don't really, we can't really say it because it's like, well, despite them succeeding at this 30% and knocking it out of the park, we don't have, like, the casual systems in place that, like, keep people interested, which is, you know, if we had time, I might get into how my, I think I've said it in the previous shows as well, and it'll be in a video coming up soon. But I, I think quick play needs, I, I think the experience that people want, which is, I have a few heroes I like. What's my SR? Tell me. Th th they can go to quick play for that. And I would rather they just remove ranked and make it like a, a team thing that happens tournament tournaments and stuff. And you 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 group up together to play in them. Like that would we would all have such a different like viewpoint on where we view the game. I I I feel like so many decisions were made in order to appease the uh, jerk who was holding your ranked games hostage in solo queue but then everyone left anyway. It's like they bent over backwards to please that guy and like make sure everyone gets what they want all the time, but then they all left. So it was like, well, what was the point of that? <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm, I'm being too vague at this point, but um, 
and I'm kind of glossing over years of <laughs> their decision making and saying that, but mm -hmm. uh, they eventually come around. It just feels like it takes years for them to, to get there. So uh, I look forward to what these new changes are. I think they might be pretty indicative of, uh, of where we're at for real. And uh, maybe will defend the, we didn't abandon the game because I've been trying to say they kind of been co-developing it. We, we hinted to it a bit here. We are already kind of playing Overwatch 2.0 PvP. No one just kind of knows it. It's like, it'll, the Ryan we have now is not miles away from my cancel my pin Ryan and I have another fire True. streak. It's the same thing, okay? They, True. They change, because the cool thing about this is you go back, which I did to a year ago when we, they were struggling to deal with double shield. They, they said things like, what if more tanks were like Roadhog, as in they were about their offense? That was the implication. We didn't really know what that would look like, but it turned into the Giga Ryan we have now, which is you have some defense, but it ain't lasting long. You better go in and make a play. And, and I'm sitting here like all the characters feel kind of like that, where it's like you're on a clock. Go make a play. OK, mm -hmm. there's none of this. I get to wait around and exist for even Lamp. As bad as Lamp is it's still pretty limited. It's still pretty flimsy. Like it feels like the proportionally the worst thing that stands out, but compared to the rest of the game uh, uh, or, or like where the, the game's at overall, it's still about like, like if you play BAP, even though you have that insane lamp, it's like your big play is what you're old. And beyond that, everyone else is making plays. Like everyone else, everyone gets their turn in the game right now to have this big moment of impact. And that to me is what makes Overwatch great. And we can have little debates on whether D.Va should be able to remech and kill a thing. I think it's amazing and great. But, like, I just feel like this is in the spirit of what we should expect from the game. Like, it's a game about making wacky shit happen, which when people come back and start playing that again, I think they'll be pleasantly surprised. And the rhetoric we have about, you know, that some people have, uh, that, that that it's broke. I don't think three of us, but maybe, you know. Uh, it, uh, anyway, um, can't really talk too much about Sam. He's not here anymore. But, you know, he's like, <laughs> he, you know, he... I think he just might need a little more patience with the with the meta a little bit, which mm -hmm. uh, it, it took a while for me to accept it into my heart as well. Like I, I was more critical of it than Sam was. You guys know. I mean, I literally wrote essays to the dev team about how BS Lamp is to play against. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's like if they just took that, even if they nerf it, it's like there's so much crazy offense that I almost don't even hate it where it's at. Because if it was just gone like things would just be blowing up all the time because they already play that right. way. So I, I kind of, I'm just like, I don't want to, I don't want to upturn the apple cart we, and say this has to change. That's, that's, that's where I've moved on. We've adapted position. to that world, right? right? I know because I play with Frito. Like, we've just adapted to that world. We just expect when the Ryan gets walled off, okay, well, there's a lamp going to come flying in. So don't go inting in with a pin or anything. There's, there's a lamp coming. And I think I'm okay with that world now. Mm -hmm. So Frito, carry on, finish your point. Uh, I, I, yeah, I don't think I'll ever finish. I just talk. <laughs> I just, it, uh, I need an editor to tell me when to stop, um, well, or to go back and edit myself. This is why I don't do podcasts. Uh, well, I like your idea. I like your idea of, you know, let's try some experimental shit while we're here. You know, like the, again, I think, I think the key and who am I to tell Blizzard what to do, but they need to get things right before we watch two. They can't bundle their way through after they release or watch two, right? So they need to figure stuff out before like key things yep. particularly pve because they they can't experiment with the pve right now right they just it's not there but the pvp yeah they can experiment the crap out of it because it's just a bunch of dead casual like not dead hardcore players who are just like zombies now grind rank 24 7 uh shout out to emong man's got built diff but you know now's the Actually. time to experiment with us now's the time to experiment with us for me to to bring back to the concluding thoughts of like what we want to see in 2021 I would sum it up, and I, I said this in a recent video, that I think the game balance is better than it's been in a long time, but the game feels worse to play than it has done in a long time because of the rank system, because of how bad ladder feels right now. So for me, what I would love is for the next year, whatever it is, two years till Overwatch 2 comes out, at least make the game fun for the players who are still here. Like, I, okay, I, I've accepted that maybe the game is, you know, content-wise, not is kind of abandoned. And then the devs are going to be like, what do you mean? What do you mean? But yeah, it's kind of abandoned, but at least make it tolerable like again that's no shade i have a lot of fun when when the game goes right but the game goes wrong too frequently for me like matchmaker diff goes too often for me so for me i just like for the game that is now to be fun when i queue up in rank and let me play with my friends and please don't punish me that's 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 my humble request basically well flats was so. even saying it would duo queue and that, that's what i was saying as well uh before we started majorly stacking i was just playing with um nates and and it, duos 
it, it, it was just a noticeable difference that the matchmaker is just is uh, it wrecks you it wrecks you so hard and it's unfortunate that that's the case um which is why i think like if we were to have a tournament structure you might we might feel different about it because it's like i just i don't even care where you put me I just don't want to feel like it's up and down, up and down, up and down, right? It's like like what what I should expect my teammates to to be or the level or whatever. Like I just want it to be representative, and and not get these moments where, uh, you know, <laughs> last time we got to talk to Flats, there's the epic story of the uh, Sigma on high ground or whatever. Yeah, he doesn't know understand high ground. Like I just feel like there's, there's so many players that have no <laughs> PTSD idea. PTSD for Flats. Yeah, that right? guy still haunts me. Um, and that's part of a community problem as well. But that's a whole nother subject. But um, I think the rank system does us no favors when it 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 doesn't it's not as accurate and it, it it's it's basing the matchmaker to anticipate the the desires of the players for their like fun factor almost more than actual accuracy like they don't really necessarily care if the SR means a certain thing they more more so just mean like this match should be supposedly fair but that means then they bias hard what when like you're in a a duo then it's you're really gonna have a horrible time <laughs> like like that's just weird now that the it's partially because the player pool is so low that i think that that it even uh even it used to be a duo you felt fine but um now recently it definitely feels like it, it's uh just another group uh you're in the group queue basically um so if it's gonna do that anyway in the hybrid system i just don't i just I said this literally year one as well, by the way. And if we've just eventually come to this point where it felt like I was always on an island on my own saying this because everyone's like, no, we love solo queue. And um, but now I think we kind of see the the end result if when, when you try to stick to that strategy for a game that's that isn't really a solo queue friendly game. Yeah, that's my story. And I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Flats, <laughs> anything to add? Nope, none from me. Well, on that note, then, I think we will peace out here. I am greatly appreciative of you guys giving me your time. Flats, I know you, you know, you, you with your throat and everything you soldier through. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. Samito, the bourboned up Samito. I appreciate his time as well, wherever he is, whatever he's doing. I hope he's having a good one. Love the passion. Um, and yeah, it's been an awesome discussion, guys. Thank you very much. Let's hope that 2021 is an optimistic year. I love Flats' optimism. Let's hope that we do get some awesome changes, maybe some wacky experimental stuff, but... Let's have it be fun. Let's not have all our content creators poached by Apex Legends, please. Thank you very much. So on that note, let's go say hello to Jane, who is still playing Overwatch. Um, and yeah, we'll catch you guys later. Thanks very much. For